welcome to the Bob and Tam's Hour of Variety Show and Escapades. Ding. There you go. So, uh, so have your microphones on? Nah, we're just going to use one on the camera. There shouldn't be any extra noise, so hopefully it'll sound all right here. We're actually in the RV. We're all loaded up. We're heading to Orlando bright and early tomorrow morning. Uh, we had some excitement. Well, Big Ben. We had some to meet up with him. excitement. We're going to talk about our neighbors over here in a minute. And uh, just some old, I should have camera on, but the guy was, well, we'll tell the story. I'll we'll wait for a few people to get on before I start on to that story. Uh, we weren't, didn't know if we are going to do a live tonight or not because we wanted to meet the old girlfriend and her friend one more time. And, I didn't say uh, goodbye. I mean, we were with them last night, but I didn't say goodbye. So if you've seen the video today, we did a short. Uh, we were actually in Venice. That's where she used to live. She met one of her other friends from down here in Florida. In Venice. She so lives in Venice. They had the uh, Sharp Tooth Festival. Yeah. I had no idea. I've seen Shark Teeth all the time, little bitty ones. They've got ones that are like this big. Gigantic. I And I never knew a Shark Tooth because they're a triangle, of course. But on the edges of the tooth where they come to a point are like serrated, like a knife. I didn't know that. No wonder they can just bite your arm right off. So it was just, it was interesting. We never really talked a whole lot, but I mean, they had some neat stuff. They also had uh, horse teeth. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know who would buy that. It was teeth. several people selling And they those. were black. So they must deteriorate. But they were like hard as a rock. Yeah. So it was kind of weird. I was neat to go to. Kind of glad we went. Yeah. Uh, experienced that before we headed out. Uh, Venice is kind of a, like a little bit of a beachy town down, downtown. Uh, it's very busy. We did find a great place to eat at. We're going to talk about that on a video. I made a video. Well, actually, didn't make it. I, I filmed it today, and we'll I'll put it up one day next right. week just for something to put out to let you guys know kind of where we went to eat at. It was really a great place to eat, and I had great food. All four of us had uh, different th different varieties of the menu, and it was actually everything was really good. Yep, it was. That doesn't happen. Very right. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about our neighbors next door over here. So next door to us here, uh, there's a lot of full time people here. Uh, some of them are snowbirds. Some of them are people that work in the area. So we got over here three guys. Uh, one's a Mexican. One's a black guy. And the other one, I think, is a Mexican, too. I think. We only talked to one. So this guy, uh, well, yes, I guess this morning, it's afternoon, yeah. this, morning, this morning, we pulled the motorcycles and put them in the trailer. We loaded them up in the back. I put a stand underneath so the trailer don't flip like it did once before. And uh, so we pull the bikes in, and this guy comes over. Of course, he can't speak any English at all. She knows a little bit. And so so he kind of talked a little bit, and she gave him a card and a sticker and all this kind of stuff. And he kind of went back over there. Well, he's been, for the last two days, he's been sitting out on this picnic table. I don't know if he goes to bed. I don't know anything. So this morning, after we did that, I, I was outside doing, oh, I'm trying to drill the holes for her backrest to mount it so it doesn't fall off. Good Amazon thing. We'll have to show you a video on that too. Uh, so I got one hole drill. Well, I'm gonna have to go with different bolts uh, because I thought I was gonna go through the seat and the seat's just soft, so I it would it just, just put a hole in it. So I'm gonna put something else in. And so we'll show you that. Turn that down. Sorry. So uh, so we're over there. So this morning, the guy this afternoon, I guess the guy came over here. Oh, I guess that's what he wanted you to do. I know, but is that after oh. we got back or is that no, what do? Oh, before, still, before, before I left. So he came over and he kept saying stuff to me. And I'm like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I, I no comprende, no comprende. <laughs> I didn't, I should have said that. I didn't do it. And uh, so finally he got it on his phone. He wanted to know if I would take him down the street so he could buy some beer. Well, he got two trucks, but apparently they're not allowed to drive them, I guess. I don't know. One's a big old, they're lawn service. And no, they paint. They paint stuff. That big old giant straight truck out here, probably about a 15 or 20 foot truck, straight truck. So. I like finally I, the guy kept asking and asking. I'm like, I, I came in here and told her, I said, oh, I'm gonna take this guy down here and let him buy some beer. I, you know, whatever. So I go down and it's only not very far down. He went, I was gonna go left and he ended up saying, Go right. Well, he pointed that way. So I went down there and then we passed that the place. Somebody's like, oh, no. And so I'm like, Okay, okay, okay. So I made a U turn and, and so I pulled up and he's like, oh, Gas, gas, gas. And I'm like, No, no, I don't need any gas. He says, Soda, soda, soda. And I said, No, soda, wah, 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 wah. And I'm like, No, I don't need anything. Uh, Just go get your beer. And I'll sit here and wait for you. Well, he was in there for a long time. I'm like, dude, is this guy robbing the gas station? And I'm waiting for the cops to pull behind me. Guy. So I'm kind of like, the truck's running. And I'm just sitting with the air on. And so I'm kind of looking around, you know, waiting for, Wee! hey, we're YouTubers. I don't know that guy in there. I came here because hey, I'm waiting to go inside. I'm on the phone. and But nobody ever came up. So finally, the guy comes out. He, he got him a 24-pack. Uh, yeah. And then a 12-pack of something else. And uh, maybe it was those sackies. I don't know what he got. He, so he wanted to put oh, it in the bed of the truck. And the, the I saw bed, it out there. Bed of the truck was full. So I'm like, no, put it in, behind the seat here. I moved this up, and he put us in there. 
and he, he kept he kept bumping fists all the time, bumping fists. And so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I bring him back, drop him off, and that was kind of the end of it. So we went to Venice, was down there till I don't know, four or five o'clock, and we came back. And we're outside hooking the trailer up now. So we're all hooked up to the truck. Everything's disconnected except for the power. Uh, sewers, water, jack stands, everything's gone. Everything's, everything's hooked up to the truck. So he comes over to her and wanted her. Well, we thought he kept saying that he got the other four guys. He kept saying, four, and he kept pointing to the trailer. And he's like, and he kept going like, a like phone, a phone. phone. So, and, he's, and, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. I thought he meant. He got those guys to subscribe to our channel too. That's well, what I thought. So then he comes back a few minutes he later. He doesn't really talk. He just kind of points and and hands the phone to her. And what do they say on the phone? Yeah, he's like, and I thought he was going to let me talk to one of the guys inside. I'm like, why don't they just come out? And he hands me the phone, and I'm like, hello. And she's like, nine one one. What's your emergency? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, did you call nine one one? And he's like, the the four inside and telephone. Four There's only inside. three inside, so I don't I don't know. Two inside. Yeah, two. He's so I, I don't one. know what's going on. So ended up being that was so finally she said, Do you have anybody that can speak Spanish on 911? Which is, of course they have to down here, Lord. Well, she had to call and get a translator and then so they got so he handed the phone back to him. And so we came back in the trailer. I kept trying to ask him if somebody hurt inside. I thought maybe some of the guys were hurt or they, they couldn't got, wake him up. Drank so they don't have beer, they passed, they passed out. out. I and, didn't know. So I don't we don't know. We have no idea what was going on. But this guy's been sitting outside for two days straight. He didn't go to work with him yesterday. And then he's been out here all day today. And we've never talked to him the whole time we've been here. So here comes the cops. There's two cars and yeah, three officers. Two weeks. They've been here too. They were here probably before us. Yeah. And uh, well, last night he had the music up a little bit loud till probably about 10 o'clock before he turned it down. But I mean, you couldn't, if we had the TV on, we couldn't hear, couldn't it. hear it. But when we turned the TV off, you could hear a little bit of it. And then I don't know if I fell asleep, but I, I never heard it again. And so, so the cops come. And so I go out there. Because I'm like, you know, because they got this guy, the guy we were talking to is on the ground sitting. And the two other guys, one's over at one end, one's at the other end. And all three officers are kind of talking. Well, I guess one officer talking to one, the other one's just standing there. And then two so guys were standing. fell out of the trailer. The guy, the black guy. They opened the door for the black guy and he almost fell out. So I walk over there and I, I said, you know, I just want to let you know. We are the ones. He's the one that called. We talked to him on the, she talked to him on the phone because the, he she handed the phone to, he handed the phone to her so i said we really don't know what's going on i said all we know is this morning he came over and wanted me to take him up to the liquor store and get him some beer or gas station he goes oh you're the one that got him all that beer i'm like they just asked whatever I, three guys should be able to drink that beer from nine o'clock this morning yeah, and early. not be totally plastered well he already kind of smelled boozy when he got in the truck this morning but i'm like who cares you know so he's like okay thanks no problem you know just thanks a lot so the both squad cars pull away. So she's got the window open. She had the windows open on both sides still. And the sun's setting on the over here now. And we had it open, but it made our faces. Yeah. Half and, of it was bright and half was dark. Yeah. So we, here comes cop car again. And the cops are out there again. And she's like, she's sitting at the, th the sinks over here. So she was standing, look out the window. Because like, they're arresting the guy. So I look out the window and they are, they're cuffing the guy. Well, they went inside and they got his duffel bag. So I don't know. And the black guy was giving him a hug and he was like patting him like, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm like, I don't know what happened. So I don't know if he called 911 again, again. and that's what they arrested him for, for calling in fake calls. And because that's what the cops had told me when I was out there. They're just, they're all drunk. And uh, and I said, I don't know what's going on. I don't know nothing. And because I, I had looked out the window before the cops showed up and he was out there with the phone, like he was talking to somebody and talking to the black guy, like they were all talking to each other. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. He said he's from California or Phoenix and the other guy's from Miami. from Miami. I don't know where the hell they're all from. But, uh, they're I just know. workers. And I guess the guy who ever owns the company with the truck probably gives him a place to stay and pays him. And this trailer sits like this. They got it all the way jacked up in the front. And it's like, this is messed up. But I mean, I have no idea. I So that was our excitement this afternoon. <laughs> really, After really we got home. Yeah, it really wasn't a big deal to us. But I mean, I kind of felt sorry for the poor kid, this guy. Because he, he was old enough to buy, buy beer, but I, I, I don't think he was over 30. <laughs> Could have been. I have no Well, idea. he was just all excited when we were bringing the motorcycles in. And yeah. he was really like, my bike. He, he says, I like, he like, that was the one he liked. And he said, and, and so she showed him mine. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, yeah. So I thought both of them were mine. So she got the video of the other yesterday where she was riding her bike and showed it to him. So he was all excited. And, and then he kept coming over here like he wanted to ride it. And then he said he rode a Suzuki down in uh, Miami. Only a few words I get out. He, he said stuff, and then he said Suzuki. 
And then he said, oh, no, no. So I said, oh, you rode a bike down in Miami and Suzuki, a Suzuki down in Miami. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Otto might have filmed him. <laughs> but, uh, so we don't know. He'll probably be in the Pope. So we got to get the hell out of here before the boss comes tomorrow and finds out. we, we That one of his workers is in the Popo. <laughs> and we got in the beer. I mean, it, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like I was buying it for a minor. And I guess they're not allowed to drive the trucks. I don't know. There's a pickup truck here that's never moved. A nicer looking pickup truck, probably 90s model, late 90s, early 2000 model truck. I didn't ever look at that. But it's never moved. But the big straight truck goes out every day except for a Sunday. And uh, they go out and do, I guess, painting and whatever the hell they do. So that was our excitement today. I almost got 200 miles on my bike. Yeah. So we kind of put that in the video yesterday, 200 miles. We didn't drive 200 miles the other day. That was just kind of letting you know she's almost at 200 miles that she's rode on her bike since she, uh got it all fixed up i don't know if she are you counting the miles taking it back to the the same well we got it at 6800 and it's almost at 7000 mm. so there you go but it's running fine no real issues we're probably almost gonna... 200 miles on it i don't know i probably didn't put all 200 on but close so we're probably going to go ahead and change the exhaust on it uh it's really quiet yeah. so we're going to put something a little louder uh, we might try uh, some, I'm not going to put no neighbor haters or not, but we might try some Cobras on there, try something different, uh, just to have a different taste to let people know different kinds of pipes and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of that. So we're like heading out tomorrow morning, bright and early. She's figuring we're going to leave around seven tomorrow and get on the highway. And because the traffic, when we came down here, the traffic going up towards Orlando was just chaos. So we're bumper figuring, and we want to get up there about around noontime because that's when they open the gate. And I wonder, you know how the back road we took when we got to Lakeland? I wonder if we get to Lakeland, if we can take that back way, because that would drop us off right there. I don't know. That's what I would say. Because then you were not on the four, because the four is what's nuts. It's just bumper to bumper all the way there. I don't know. All the way to Disney. I'm assuming that's where everybody's going. I have no idea. Or downtown Orlando working, maybe. I have no idea. But it was just chaos there. I don't know if there was construction. I don't know if there was accidents. I love the Mustang seat. Mike. One of them was an accident. So it's like <clears throat> just nuts. So that's kind of what we're, so we're going to be up there on Monday. So we stay there in Orlando. If you're in the area, we're going to be in Orlando from Monday till she's thinking Sunday or Monday. The following week, we'll be pulling into uh, Shea Valley. Yeah, Windy, Windy Acres. Acres. Shea Valley. But well, I never can remember Shade Valley's name. And uh, so on Saturday night, which we got to call the monkey and let him know that we're it's going to be us and the monkey is going to be putting on some games on Saturday night. Uh, going to start around four ish. Going to do some adult games, uh, fun ones, and uh, be couples that can be involved in this. Uh, and they got all kinds of stuff going on. There. They they've got a uh, body painting, you know, and, and there you don't have to have pasties on if you don't want. If you do, you do. They have a uh, wet T-shirt contest. They've all, because we talked about giving, we told them on the, now we're not doing the wet t-shirt contest and we're not doing the body paint. That's the guy that's the MC inside. And uh, we thought we were going to kind of do a lot of that, us and the monkey, but ended up, I don't know. Originally the guy told us he did, that the guy inside, all he ever wanted to do is do the stripper pole. And last time we were there last year, in a few minutes, we were up there by the stage. They had fucking freaking dudes up there dancing on poles. Yeah, when they were trying to do, I guess it was pole dancing contest. And it's, and it's all guys. It so when I said something girl. to the guy that owns the, the campground and the property there, he's like, he did what? And I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, it's all right to have one guy come up and just be a joke. Be funny. To, to start it out. But after that, nobody wants to see a dude on a pole. So. Well, they were probably all drunk. And yeah, thought, hey, I'll get up there and do it. And it's like, and then he's supposed, to have, supposed to have topless bull riding. We've been told that. But we probably ain't going to find out for sure until we get there on Tuesday. And it's supposed to be a, some kind of good prize on Saturday night on that. So a lot of things going on. And we're also going to do, uh, you know, some bike stuff. We're going to do uh, maybe a slow race, a couple slow races if you want to get involved. Uh, we might do a keg toss. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do anything else. Not not a whole lot. Because, I mean, there's some other stuff going around town, too. They have some slow races in some other places and stuff like that. So we're not going to do a whole lot. This is going to be a kind of a sample to see if, if this is something we want to do and something he likes us to do. I'd like to be more involved with the topless or the wet t-shirt contest and uh, the pole dancing and all that kind of stuff. We could probably get a lot more people involved. I need glasses. Thank you. Well, you should have brought your glasses. Oh. It's not my fault. She can't read. Got her little thing right down here in front of her. Well, she Nancy wants to see you guys riding pow. Pow. P-O-W-L or P-O-W exclamation point. I don't know what that means. 
So, talking about her riding her bike oh. down. Oh, no, we're not pole dancing. Uh, and she's tried pole dancing before, and she never got, she's never been able to get it down. It was a place we used to go dance and stuff, and they'd have poles. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try that, you know, one night after I've had a couple. Not as easy as it looks. Get a little more limber. So one of the things that I swore I would never, ever, 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 ever buy. thought it was what? the stupidest thing in the world. And the reason I got this is because if she follows behind, well, one of the things is when she's not on the bike anymore, not, which we back up, with the few times that she's not on my bike, we're not going to have all the extra, because she holds the camera down low, back, forward, over our heads, all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I only need the front camera mounted on the front of my fairing back here, and that's it. The one down low and the one I would put on the back, I don't use, because what you'd have to, I don't want that to run all the time, because the camera I put on the front, I turn on and off. I don't need an hour's worth of clips of me riding. Just, you know, if you're a YouTuber, you don't need all that crap. You download it. It's too much work. So what did I end up buying? I bought a 360 camera. So I'm not going to figure out how to do that. And uh, I should have yeah, talked a little bit more to the guys that were in Daytona, which were with uh, Instant 360. Now, I also see, which I got a really good deal. If you can find one. Were they kind of with JMP Cycles? No. Oh, I thought They're by themselves. Uh, if you want one of these, because I guess what's coming out, I've seen a video today and I didn't watch it. I don't think this guy even has one yet. There's a new three. This is a 360 X3. They make now, they're going to be coming out soon with the X4. So right now, if you got a Costco or a Sam's around you, Sam's doesn't, doesn't advertise it. We didn't realize until we got in the store that they're not even out. And because my daughter picked one up for me in Kansas and we we're going to have it shipped here. Well, you could get this for $379. It comes with the camera, comes with uh, a stick, it comes with two batteries, and it gives you a flash card, which is only a 64 uh, megabyte. So it's not, the card's not really big enough. But uh, all that for $379. So it's an excellent price because everybody else is selling just a camera for $399. So the camera we're using right now is just our phone, and it's a 23 plus, yeah. Samsung 23 plus. That's what we're using. Promoto says, what are you using right now? It's a very nice. Yeah, we use the phone. Well, we found out that if you're really good with your phone, your phone is really the, your best friend because the phones can zoom in and, you know, you can set your phone up to, I think these phones here will shoot at 8K. And so you can shoot at a higher resolution. But what we normally do is I have, which it's not here, it's in the back of the truck. I have a phone. I have another 23 that I have that has no flash card, no card in it. And the reason I do that is because I want to be able to have all that memory if I do film. So when I use my gimbal, like if I go out and do nighttime shooting, I shoot with a phone. Nothing will shoot better at night than either an iPhone or a Galaxy, one of the newer models, because they, they just so well to the light. People all the time say, what light do you have here in your camera? I'm like, no. So all the stuff we do on Main Street, all the stuff we did in Daytona at night, all that is shot just with a phone by itself. Now we do get, sometimes we'll put lapel mics on, sometimes we don't. Uh, sometimes I'll mount, which this has got the fuzzy mic. I can't get it apart. The fuzzy mic. I don't have one in there. It's in my other bag. I already put it away. Uh, fuzzy mic on it, and I might have it held on the side. Uh, or I'll walk around with this. Right now, it's just on a tripod stick. And then we got a, a, a mount for the microphone on top. I never really rely on the phone's microphone. Now, sometimes when we're walking around, I do use the phone microphone. But it's, phones don't have very good quality. And I'm not thinking this thing's going to have anything. But I'm not really looking to use this for any type of audio. Uh, it's going to be mainly, and so I'm going to have to buy a mount for the bottom. I found a couple on Amazon. One's about $39 or $49 for the mount. That's just a clamp is all it is. I'll have to look at the one that I've got for my camera mount for the back. I might be able to use that. So seven, which is Wyatt's dad from Wyatt's Lemonade Stand in Sturgis. They already had their first lemonade stand for the summer. And they're going to get a new billboard up. They're going to have new merch. They're going to have a poker run. So if you want to find out any more about all of that good stuff that's going on at Wyatt's Lemonade, if you're in the area or going to be in Sturgis, uh, go to Wyatt'sLemonade.com. And you want to make sure you check out Wyatt's Lemonade while you're there. They've got a personal invitation out for Kid Brock and Jelly Roll to see if they'll stop by. I'm betting money you might get Jelly Roll to stop by. Yeah, I'm thinking already in Sturgis, I think we're going to be able to meet him. I think if you come to the Jelly Roll concert, I can bet money he will be in the crowd after the concert. It seems like he likes to party after his events. 
So just a word of advice, if you'd like to hang out with Jelly Roll, I'd probably see after the concert on Tuesday night. Hang around, and he'll probably be out in the crowd drinking and having fun with everybody. That's just from what I'm seeing from him and the way he is. And a couple of people I've talked to that actually know him, I think that's a pretty good hands down. And I'm pretty sure I think we're going to get a chance to meet up with him. I don't know if he'll get on the, on YouTube or not because some – I don't know if Jelly Roll has got a promoter or not, but something because he does a lot. He's doing a lot of everything now. So he may not have a promoter. He may have a record label and he can do whatever he wants. Now, some guys like Kid Rock and some of these other bands have a, a, a marketing company or a manager that will that wants a penny from everything that they do. So you can't. You, when I talked to Rod last year, I wanted to talk to Kid Rock two years ago. And they're like, it's pretty hard to get that done unless you got everything all pre-approved. You know, what you're going to talk to him about, the questions and all that stuff. It's like, I just want a picture then at that point. So that year, it kind of got screwed up. We never got any. So uh, our 2799 sent me a picture today of his rhubarb plant. Because he brings me strawberry rhubarb pie every year in Sturgis. So he says it's coming along. So that was a nice little text I got. I use my 23 from my fans only page. Mike says, Mike says he needs a, Mike needs a mic on his phone when he does lives for us, which he does. Cause we couldn't really hear what you guys were saying. Even when you were talking to some of the people, uh, 360 is good. If you enjoy editing, it's always, uh, always edit my 360 on my phone. So I'm going to look at that and, and see about it. I'm going to try to reach out to the Instant 360 and see if they're going to be at any other rallies. It'd be nice just to sit down with somebody. I kind of talked to Ada Amsoil the other day about what, you know, some questions I had before I bought it. Uh, what, what, and he still don't know everything about it. But more or less, I'm going to be doing it, using it more for just getting some extra shots on the motorcycle. Uh, we're getting close, which I don't want to really do this either. And we're probably going to get to doing this real soon. We're going to put microphones in our helmet. Uh, and but we're not going to talk about another thing. He said he'd never, never, yeah. ever do. We're not going to talk stupid stuff. I'm not going to tell you about the weather. I'm not going to tell you about me going to get some hot dogs and some. We're on our way to go get gas. <laughs> and it'd be more of, hey, we're coming. You know, we're we're going out to the Badlands. You know, we're going to go out here. We're pulling out of Sturgis. <laughs> we're going to go down this row. We're going to make a right here. So we'll tell. So that way, there's the sounds on there when we do that. So. We'll see what happens. Now, the other day I did a video, which I got a pretty good comments. I didn't get a lot of views on it. That uh, it was the one when she rode the bike. I put people singing instead of just music in the background. Like and that. she didn't like it. But I had quite a few people say that they they liked that. So I was in the other room. I'm like, is that on our video? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. It just it sounded like headbanging music more to me. Supposedly rock is what my selection was. The first song I thought was better than the second one. But. Uh, it is what it is, and it's just things I'm trying out to see. Because to me, just because people always say at the time, why don't you put a muffle on your on your microphone so we could hear your, your bike riding down the road? Well, when you're doing 50 or 60 miles an hour, there ain't no windscreen that's going to stop the noise from coming out of it. These guys that got the microphone and the helmet, you're still not hearing the bike. Now I have thought about another one where I used to have the rear camera mounted, and if I had the rear camera mounted behind her, you could hear the bike, you could hear the motor going, you could hear me shifting and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. So George from Chrome Cigars is on. He said you he go. he's going to go to OCC. Is it? It must be next weekend. Yeah. Yeah, heading to OCC Roadhouse in Clearwater this week for a biker build off in next week in Leesburg. There you oh, go. We're thinking about it being at OCC on Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, we'll so just... I'll see you maybe either on Wednesday if they're doing a bike build. Could be, and uh, they're the. Birch is going to try to set us up again. We've been promised a couple of times, but every time we show up, Birch's never around. Well, we met him the first time, but not for Bert, but for the for Paul, the old man. We wanted to get him on camera, so uh, they think they're going to. They we're supposed to call him next week, Monday or Tuesday, and That's we're figuring Wednesday be a good day to go over there That's and right. do that. I don't know if she'll ride her bike over there or not with traffic and stuff. I don't know what her decision will be. Uh, so we might just ride. I don't know my bike how I over. feel when I wake up. Uh, this week, yes. Uh, I'm there on Wednesday. Okay, well, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure we're going to go over there Wednesday. Unless it's pouring down rain, then we'll probably ride the yeah. truck. Well, from one of the guys over there at, uh, uh, from Black Widow. Black Widow, he's kind of their Facebook guy and all that, and he all takes care of that. So we've been dealing with him the last few years that we've been coming out here. And, and that's what he said. He says, if you guys want to do anything, he says, let me know. He says, I'll be up there on Wednesday. I'll find out what's going on. And he says, you know, I'll... Try to get you in with Paul Sr. and Bert. 
So let's and see. we said, that's great. So that would be an extra video we could add. And um, we'll see you there, George. So we'll be coming over there. And so that's kind of all we got really planned for next week. We don't really have anything special to do. Uh, depending on live on next Sunday, I don't know if we'll have one. If we're going to end up going over to Panama City, I don't know what time we're going to get there. So we can get over there on. Yeah, no. no well, okay, so Leesburg wouldn't be till Tuesday. So yeah, we we'll probably have a live tomorrow, next Sunday. I was thinking we'd be. I'm keep thinking we're going to Panama City. Let's keep it over because once Leesburg is over, we've got to get over to Panama yeah. City. So there we may leave Sunday or maybe Monday morning. We got to get talk to the promoter. He originally said we could get on the Sunday, but normally last last couple of years you couldn't Wait, get in until Tuesday. Making smoke. So pretty exciting. <clears throat> we're also going to be getting uh, around the twenty first through the twenty eighth. We're going to have Marcus from uh, Camp Easy Ride is going to come on. He's got some big announcements that he wants to make, which we'll have to find out what that's going to be. And uh, he's in Leesburg, going to be coming up. So if you're looking for a place that, hey, you know, I don't know where I want to stay. I just want to ride my bike out. He's got those tents he rents out. Uh, they have in Leesburg there. They're right over there at Windy Acres. Did I get it right? Windy Acres is where they're at. And uh, so you can go still on their website. All you got to do is go to CampEasyRide.com. And you can get all the information on Camp Easy Ride. Yeah. And it is. It's, if you... If you, especially if you're a loner, if you're if you're somebody that you know, I don't really know anybody, but I'd love to be at the rally. That's a really great compound to go to. Just what they put on, you know, they have drinks, they they, they do some uh, different kinds of food and stuff. Sometimes they have, uh, they always have coffee. They got the hot tub. They sometimes have a cooling tub if it's hot. They have uh, they have a party bus that usually on Saturday night they'll go downtown. You can all load up on it, but you have to be at the in the camp to do that. And uh, so not a bad deal. You get a tent, you get an air mattress on up on stilts. You get uh, rugs down. You get a little a fan, a uh, little charging pack. You can charge your phone and stuff with. You can't run an air conditioner or nothing on it. Uh, then they have a couple of chairs that sit out front. Uh, so yeah, it's really not. We were there last year. We only stayed one, two nights in it because uh, we had the trailer there. And uh, so, but it's kind of neat. It's all roped off. Got a place for you to park your bikes and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty in -depth. And like I said, we did a bunch of interviews, and we're going to be doing that on more videos that he's sponsoring, because he's one of our sponsors now. And another one we're going to talk to in Leesburg, and he wants to talk, which will be two weeks, I guess, because on that Monday, they start rolling in. So it'll be coming in on Monday. We'll go over there and talk to them and see what they want to do. They're very interested in doing something with us for the year. So that's going on. So we are not going to Spring Fling, but Spring Fling is going to start next week, uh, Thursday. Thursday, I think it starts. Yeah. Uh, we talked to the Badgers. Badgers are going. They're heading out. Their plans don't change. They're heading out Monday. And I uh, hope well, to be there. Tomorrow. Yeah. So they've been doing a lot of stuff. If you guys don't know who the Badgers are, you can go watch the video we did the other day. He said he's going, too. He wants to get that fat bob that Adam's given away. I guess Adam Sandoval's given a bike away. Yeah. Get that bob. And so all kinds of stuff. Uh, also, if you're an Adam... Sandoval fan. He's got his campground down there and he's mm -hmm. also got tents that he's done now. They're kind of like Camp Easy Rider. A lot of people are taking ideas from what they do, uh, but it's teepees. And uh, he's got a teepee there. He's got a couple chairs, all this stuff. You get to use the, the bathhouse they have there. I don't know if there's any food or nothing included or not, but I just happened to see it on his Facebook page popped up this morning on my thing and it had all the stuff. He's got that little campground. So I guess they're not opening. I'm assuming they're not going to have Flathead Campground open. For spring, for spring fling, fling. I don't I'm know. assuming because he's doing Adam's doing a bunch of stuff with that, and Adam's tied in with the other one too, supposed to be. So I'm not sure what's all going there. So we're not going to go there just because not it's not it's a, not a bad rally. I would have loved to have gone to it just to kind of see, but they waited so long that, and some people got misunderstanding of what we were going to do. We we can't afford to drive from here right now and go all the way to the spring fling. Spring fling. It cost me eight, nine hundred dollars to drive there and back in gas. And we ain't gonna do it that anywhere near that for videos. So the idea was, which we had talked to him before about it, that we would fly in and depending on where we could land, we were thinking about maybe flying into Fayetteville, flying to Fayetteville, they can come pick us up, and then we go pick up the bike at Pig Trail Harley and we'd ride the bike around all the time. Well, it ended up being that it that's a lot because what ends up happening, which somebody the other day thought we were gonna drive a car around the whole time. We're not going to drive a car around the whole time. The idea of a car is we bring a giant Harley Davidson duffel bag. The one's got wheels on the back of it. Big giant one that you could put football gear in. 
That's full. <laughs> or a small child. <laughs> we put our helmets in there. We put, it could the be, like, last year it was 46 degrees. We're going to bring our chats. We're going to bring our heavier coats. We're going to bring gloves. All the stuff we need for cold cold weather. We're going to bring several pairs of jeans because if it does rain and get wet, we're going to have wet clothes. We're going to bring, you know, and it takes a lot of gear. Well, you ain't going to scrap that bag on no back of no motorcycle. No. So the idea was. And then we'll have all the bags with all the camera stuff in it. And yeah. So I got to do that. I got to bring computers. I got to bring cameras. I got to bring gear along with us. So that's that's my carry on is my gear that I use. I carry. I don't have the big bag. I put it away too. I used to carry my big bag that I have several different cameras in it. We try to bring in. We don't bring in everything like we normally would. But we bring a lot of the gear with us. Well, so it was last year or the year before. He wanted to bring the lights and everything else. And we did that when we went to Sturgis. Because we thought we were going to do a lot more interviews with Rod. It was two years a old. A lot of stuff. And it ended up we used them, but it wasn't worth the dragging them around. So the next thing was after we do that, uh, when we talked to Jeff from the Cat House, he's the one that wants to sponsor, be one of the sponsors for us to come out there. And Picture of Harley's another one that's there. And so they kind of wanted the sponsor us to come out. And he said, well, why don't you guys check in this flying in the Tulsa? Well, Tulsa wasn't too bad. When we looked before Daytona, we could fly in for about 600 bucks round trip back here, back to Orlando. And well, that's not too bad. And I kind of looked and thought, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, we could get a car for that time. And that way we could drive from Tulsa, go to the dealership on the way. I pick up the bike. She could follow me in the car into uh, Eureka Springs. Get off place to stay, park the car, and now we're on the bike. Now, during Bikes, Foods, and Barbecue, we did have a, some time it rained. Well, the nice thing is, you know, if it's raining, I don't, if I'm in the hotel and I'm coming out or wherever we're staying at, I'm not going to jump on the bike when it's pouring down rain. Maybe you're the that devoted. I'm not that <laughs> devoted to get wet. Now, if we're out on the road and it rains, then yes, that's, I'm going to ride in the rain as long as I can see. If it's pouring down so hard, I can't see in front of me. No, I'm not going to ride the bike, which we've been in that kind of rain before. Right, but so I want you to do a video on the, the big giant Harley duffel bag. No, we, we didn't can. bring it. Well, and we got it a long time ago. I don't know, we can still do it. I mean, we can do it when we get home because we didn't bring it. We forgot about it. That Luckily, we didn't go. So what I would have had done is go to Walmart and buy a big right. giant duffel bag and then take it back when we get back. Because I don't need it. I think we bought it because when we went to Cancun and we had all this scuba gear because we wanted to go scuba, not scuba diving, snorkel. And so we had our, we bought our own uh, flippers and goggles. And Ended up being, I think we were, most of the stuff we buy at Harley. We get for free. No, we don't get nothing from Harley for free. Well, I mean, you buy X amount of dollars and you get no, this for get another $35. That, 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 Are you sure? It was on sale. Right. Just like my chaps. I've probably got a four or $500 pair of chaps that I got for 125 bucks. And I bought it in the middle of the summer. Me and Art was at a store and we went in. It's actually Laidlaw's. Went in there and I thought, oh, crap, look at the And then they were nice versus the cheap ass ones I had originally from Amazon or eBay or wherever I bought them. Just cowhide is about all they are. And uh, so I still have those same pair. I probably had them for 15 or 16 years now, maybe longer than that. Still fit. And uh, but that's another story we talk about. Maybe that I don't know if they still make the ones that I, I have. I didn't go back and see. So we can always go in the stores if they've got it. Most of the stores that we deal with, the Harley stores, would let us talk about the bag. And we could get helmets and chaps and show you how to put them in there and all that kind of stuff. So we could do that. That could be a good video to show about how that works. But the, the bag's too big to put on a motorcycle. You could, if you were riding by yourself, you could put the bag up on the back seat behind you straight up. But it'd be a lot of weight. It's tall. It'd be like, it's probably, yeah, it'd be taller than, it's probably taller than me on the seat. So it'd be like having a really big fat guy behind you every time you turn. It'd be a lot of weight. Going back and forth. Yeah. <clears throat> Straight away, it'd be great. Or if you had a trike, it might it would be all right for a trike. But we take it, we've taken it on some of our trips when we've gone places. We've used that bag. Because like if you could we use Southwest. Southwest it's it's within carry all. As long as it's not over 50 pounds, they'll put it underneath. So that's why we so when we looked at all this, so what ended up happening was they didn't come to Daytona. Like they thought they were supposed to, they were going to come down and talk to us in Daytona on Wednesday and they had some other meetings. They never showed up that that's a uh, spring fling and no fault. We were okay with that. And uh, so she kind of texted them a couple times after the rally and they never wrote back, never wrote back, never wrote back. No big deal. Everything was okay. Something might've happened to somebody. And so ended up, he called, uh, <laughs> which we told you when he was called just a couple days, about a week ago, probably. And we're like, really? And we're well, scrambling around. It kind of made it deal. sound like the other sponsor would pay for everything. 
you know, pay for airline fare tickets, pay for the car rental, or they would pick us up in a limo or whatever it would be. And it's like, you know, no, we don't need a limo. Any car would be fine. Pickup truck, anything that's fine. And so when we called him, he only offered so much money and a free bike to ride. And that's fine. Which was an awesome offer. Yeah. And, but that would have still, it would have been a month or two ago. It probably would have worked. It would have ended up being about $700. We would have still had to put out of our pocket. And now the other bad news would have been is we would have had to have left tonight to go back to Orlando. And so what we ended up doing is we would have had it because we're going to leave Monday morning. We would have to take the trailer back to our friend and Sam's that we stay with in Daytona, leave the trailer there jump in the truck, come back to Orlando, get a motel for that night next to the airport so we can go out and leave. Then when we get leave back the at the airport, so then we pay for that, which I'm not complaining about any of that. And then when we get back, we got to get in the truck, drive all, now depending on what time the flight comes back. I don't remember, because I know getting out there, we get out there about midnight. And so when we got out there, we were going to have to stay all night there in Tulsa to get a car and for then, the morning. And then drive into Rogers the next morning. Yeah. So we'd have two motel rooms, parking for the truck, which that I'm not even adding any of that into the seven hundred dollars that I had. And then when we get back, we got to go back to get our trailer, and then come back and stay for one or two days. In uh, well, it'd be one day because we come back Monday. Well, I guess we could have went right to Leesburg. We could have went because he ended up telling us we could come in on Saturday if we wanted. And we probably could have stayed at Sam's one night yeah. and then drove. Yeah. over and went just straight to Leesburg. Yeah. So then I mean it probably all would have worked out. But it, it would have been just... a lot of a lot of confusion, a lot of extra thing to get this done. And so we ended up after we sat down and talked about it, we decided, you know, this is just a lot. Plus she would have she wouldn't have got to see her friend this last day. So because we would have had to been all ready we would have been it would have been last night. We wouldn't have gotten to yeah. go up there last night either. Yeah. So we would have been ready to go right now. The truck's all hooked up. We we're not leaving. We're not get we're not going anywhere. And the rest of the night, and tomorrow we'll pull out. So we hook once. I like to hook everything up at night. We take our showers. We're nice and cool. Get in bed. Tomorrow morning, all I got to do is raise the jack up on the trailer, pull the block out from underneath, throw that in there, roll the extension cord up, the power cord, and we're on the road. Well, we so, got to get the blocks. Oh. The, the pull level. the wheels. Yeah. That's, and the level. That's not the big deal. One more thing. That's your job. Well, I'm, so I'm, I'm telling, telling you. I'm telling you my job. <laughs> so I got my job in there, too. So that's what we how we do it all. So it ended up being that it just isn't going to work out this year for Spring Fling. So at this moment, we're still planning Bikes, Booze, and Barbecue. We think they still want us there for Bikes, Booze, and Barbecue. Uh, one of the things we've been trying to do right now is we're buying everything on credit cards. You're like, oh, my gosh, you're charging credit. And what we're trying to do is as I charge every week now, we're trying to pay that off. So we're trying to get some extra points on our American. Uh, uh, it's a chase. Well, it's Chase cards, but one's an American airline card, and we have a Southwest card, and then we have a Hilton card. So we're trying to charge stuff on those cards to get us more points. Well, one, she wants to go to Hawaii. So we're going to try to go to Hawaii maybe in September if all goes well. And um, so from there, and so we've already talked to Ocean City. Ocean City wants us back again. So we're going to start looking for airline tickets for both of those real soon. It's not that far away. And uh, since it's October, it's when it yep. kind of kicks up. So we've got to kind of start looking at airline tickets, see what we can find for good prices again, and go ahead and get those bought. And uh, we we don't know yet about Thunder or Thunder Beach. Not know much about Biketoberfest. Biketoberfest reached out to us, and they're very interested in us uh, us coming there too. So we she needs to make a call next week to them and see what they want to do. And that might be a possibility. We may be showing up down there for Biketoberfest. So we'll see what happens. So that's kind of the agenda. What's on, of course, Sturgis. So we'll be up in Sturgis on June 10th already. So we still got Leesburg to do, Panama City, and Myrtle Beach. Once Leesburg starts, all hell breaks out because it's nonstop until back Myrtle back Beach is over. And then we got to get all the way over to Kansas to visit the daughter, stay there two weeks, and then we'll go. We'll be going up to Sturgis. And you're like, why come? Everybody says, thing, why are you going June 10th? Sturgis until August. That's right. But this year we're going full blown in Sturgis. We are going to show you things you've never seen before. We're going to tell you about rides that you can do. We're going to explore the 385 to let you know what kind of construction is going on. We're going to show you the roads that they're doing. Maybe we can get all of it because we've got enough contacts now. We, maybe we can get somebody from the highway department that's working on the roads to kind of tell us what we're going to have up to that point. And if anybody knows anything about South Dakota, all construction stops during bike week. 
from that Friday to that last Saturday or Sunday. Bad news is there's a very good possibility that the AMA race that they were going to have downtown is canceled. What ended up happening there is a whole bunch of people uh, felt that the city didn't have the authority to spend the money. There's talk it could have been $600,000 that the city had to pay to have AMA come there. And a lot of the residents had a real problem. Um, because, well, like I say, I don't know all the things. That was, it's going to be, it would have been broadcast on Fox. Uh, one of the, I don't know if it would have been regular Fox you could watch on TV if it's one of the ones you got to, you got to, you got to belong to a sports channel or something to see. I don't know. So I don't, the, what the, some of the people I've been talking to from Sturgis said that the city was getting nothing from the royalties from any of that, which kind of sounds bad too. But what we heard was the track and everything that they built downtown, all the circle, all the curves, the, barricade so nobody none of us get killed being there they were paying for all that ama was paying for all that. now we also know which i told her the other day to call rod and she didn't do it we want to talk to buffalo chip because for you what you didn't call him i didn't think he answered he never tried and uh so buffalo <laughs> chip years ago was approached by ama or for racing out there we were there when that was happening and they agreed that they were going to build a track out at the buffalo chip talk was it was supposed to be this year it would be ready to go and we don't know anything other than that but the city was supposed to have signed a five-year contract which i don't know how all that's going to happen if it gets if it's going to be a lawsuit against that that they was all signed documents and now the city you know i don't know so right now out of four seats alderman seats in the city three of them changed we're going to get a new mayor in the city. Now, one of our subscribers here, which I won't give out anybody's name, gave me a number of one of the aldermen and said they would be very happy to work with the Bob and Tam show and give us all give us better information. Because since we've had some things before this, Tammy runs the runs it now. The, uh, she's the coordinator for the city for the for all events. Uh, I, she's a very nice lady. Nothing bad to say about her. Just seemed like she was more out of the loop. She used to be the assistant to who was the guy that was the original promoter that we knew. Jerry Coleman. Jerry Coleman was the guy that for years was the coordinator for the rally. Well, the first time we met her, she was Dan Ainsley's assistant. Oh, I did. Mm -hmm. And so she, this guy, what was the other guy's name? Jerry Coleman. Jerry. He knew everything. Everything. Anytime we call him up and ask a question, boom, 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 he had an answer. Boom, 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 had an answer. Boom. It was great. Ever since he retired, Tammy stepped up. And we also lost Dan Ainsley, which was the business agent. Which is weird. They have a business agent and a part-time mayor in the city is what they had. They got rid of the David Dan Answorth went to Rapid City. He he resigned from the city and they didn't replace him. Now also they voted not to have ever have another business agent, which I think is a bad decision because the problem is this is a lot of money that comes in here. And just like me, I wouldn't want to run. I wouldn't want to be mayor of the city and run the rally. What the hell do I know about the millions and millions of dollars that are going to come in from this rally? I might have a better, you know, I probably might have a better understanding of it than a lot of the people that maybe that are on that are on the city council now, just because we see other rallies and we're out there in all this. A lot of these times, these city officials, you never see any of them, you know, the aldermen and stuff. I don't know. A lot of them may stay at home during the rally. I don't know any of them personally. We talked to one years ago. Uh, was our alderman for the Sturgis area. And we talked to him on the phone about trying to get some information. He didn't know nothing was going on either. He couldn't answer the questions that we asked. So I don't know. Because the bad news is with a lot of this stuff is it's they're part-timers. You know, they got jobs doing something else. and But then they're, they're aldermen. I'm assuming they get aldermen, aldermen, women, that they're getting paid for this somehow. And so I don't know. And that's why I said this one person that we know, I said, you know, I would still suggest that they should hire a coordinator, a professional person outside, maybe pay them enough that they can afford to move to the churches and live there. But somebody that knows events, knows how to do it all. Uh, and we've met a lot of other people we actually got to meet this year, which we never got to meet him. We heard things about him. Uh, the guy that does all the sponsorships. Oh, Lance. Lance. And we, he was at uh, Meekum. He was on, he never talked on camera, but you've seen him a few times. And very, very, well, he, he takes care of all the spots, but he knew a lot. He was very well, I don't know how long he's been with the city, but I mean, he knew a lot. He knows a lot about the money. He knows how much Anheuser-Busch puts into it. He knows all the sponsors because that's his job. 
is to bring sponsors and he was kind of involved with this AMA, but he's an employee. He's not a holding any seat. So, so Rowan says, do you think Mike's was a barbecue is going to get any bigger? That's another rally. He's very interested in coming to. I don't know. Well, it is getting okay. bigger. Here's what's happened is years ago, which we never got to go to. It was ran by another town, which was about 30 miles, 20 or 30 miles on the other side of Rogers. That's where the dealership is at. That's where the Indian dealership is. There's, I think it's a Honda dealer. Honda dealership. And so there's three dealerships all right around in that area. And they have vendors and stuff at it. And over in Fayetteville, that's they had this one street that uh Dixon street, I think. And uh it was about maybe three blocks long, if it was that long. Uh, kind of like uh Main Street down at they talk. I mean it's I it wasn't, it looked, it didn't look like a main street. Okay. It had maybe a bar or two on it. It had it a couple, right it, next to the college. It had a couple big parking lots. That's where uh, Amzo store. Adam used to be. Yeah, he was there. Store. And so it's not like if you drove down the street, I don't know if there's any businesses you'd ever stop at. Maybe stop at that bar. But I don't know what, the, there was like a, maybe a garage, an auto repair place or something was I down there on the left. Several they say there's a couple bars. I didn't see them. Not saying they weren't anywhere there, but we seen one bar when we were down there the year 2020. We drove down there and they were still some bikes along there and stuff like that. Problem with Fayetteville was it's one of those towns that it's it's all they cared about was the college. So in 2020, the virus was coming out. So they said you cannot have the rally on our street because we don't want to get anybody sick. Well, so they said, fine, we're not going to have it. So Rogers still had had the dealership and. Eureka Springs had their event still. Well, the weekend before that, in the college in Fayetteville had a hundred thousand people come for the football game, and the weekend of the rally, they had two hundred thousand people came to the football game. So they really just wanted to get rid of us. Good riddance. And I said it when I was there in twenty twenty. I said the same thing. I could see what was going on. It wasn't. I'm not blind. And I said, you know, it'd be right for the city of Rogers to say screw Fayetteville and start their own thing because downtown Rogers is cool. A bunch of old buildings and restaurants and bars. It, it's, 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 it's kind of like Leesburg, a uh, very similar downtown area. Well, they had a big area for, for concerts, which they did. And so their the last year was their first year and they had some rough spots, but it was, it was, I liked it. it, it it's, it's growing pains that they'll have, uh, Pig Trail Harley is on the board with them to do theirs. So he he asked me some of the things. What would you recommend? You know, that's what I say. Bring more motorcycle stuff. You know, don't get these people selling perfume and magnetic bracelets and massage guns and all this. You know, and massage chairs or mattresses or <laughs> tile or whatever the hell they're selling. We're not locals. We're, we're not going to buy a, a, a recliner and strap to the back of my motorcycle and take it home. Tom Moto says you, you should run the rally. We've been, we've been asked that already a couple times. Some people have said something about it. Problem is, I don't want to be city. up there in the snow. Yeah, the city hasn't asked me. Some of the people that live there has suggested to me I should look at running for mayor. I don't want to live up there. And they ain't going to pay me enough to fly back and forth. So, yeah. I wouldn't mind being, which I thought about this before, if we ever got decided to kind of Stunts. fizzle out our YouTube channel, that I wouldn't mind being a... Uh, I forgot the word I want to say, a consultant, consultant, consultant for motorcycle rallies and go to a lot of these places and say, you know, I can tell you what right. works and I can tell you what doesn't work. And because, because we stand around and we watch all this and, and a lot of people are like, cause just like when I talk about the attendance and the difference between us and all of you that go to the rallies, even any other YouTuber, you're there to party. Yeah, I'm going to pull the camera up once in a while and film a few things, but I'm out there to do my ride and I'm do this and do this and do this. But I paid to get here. Are you going to pay and then work your butt off and not make any, not even make a tenth of the money that you spent to get there? That's what we do. And the reason we do it is because I like, I love to give information to people. I love to help people. Uh, we love meeting all of you guys. Uh, you know, we meet, a, I don't know how many thousands of you we've met. And it, that's part of the fun of doing what we do. Now, we, one thing is we've got to start cutting back just for the fact that we spent way more money than we wanted to spend of our retirement money and things like that. So we're getting to the point now where we're going to have to start selecting rallies that we go to. And if some people want to help compensate us for things, then that's fine. If we we're not more sponsors. Yeah. We always said we so, don't want sponsors. Yeah, and I said that too. And But we're looking at 
some of like camp easy ride he is never going to tell me i can't talk about something well maybe if they open another tent someplace but i mean i'm normally i don't do that anyway you know it's kind of like we do uh dan kite we we talk to him quite a bit you know he's one of the That's people right. that we've had him on our channel and stuff like that but i don't go to rush and rush has approached me and he said okay. you know if you ever want anything done i'm here to help you and i said you know we've been dealing with dan kite and he says I understand that if you just get to a point you do, you want something different i would love you guys to come to us and that's fine so i normally try not to just like handlebars we you know we we recommend joey for the handlebars all about customs he did mine and kst's out there and we know them and we've talked to them before and they've been on our channel but i mean i don't really push everybody to them i push more people to joey and so a lot of times when we look at vendors we kind of like now we do more with rick rack than i do with jp cycles or Cyril. but shane is more informational for me he gives me more information he shows me more stuff versus zero only if kelsey's. kelsey's there is the only one that really gives me great information and if she ain't there the other people just don't know well she's the owner's girlfriend and been there forever so she knows the company, she knows the products, and that's what you want. You want somebody to give you, and we've kind of stopped to get away from that. We're going to get back to that because we're trying to figure out why nobody's watched in Daytona. And we're trying to think, you know, what is the things that we don't do that we used to do? And that's one of the things we the vendors, new products, stuff yeah. that's going on. Not, I'm not there just to promote the vendor every time and say, here's what, you know, I do it with Dan Kai. I mean, we do show some of the things that his artwork he's doing and stuff at the time. He's but I mean, good. like when we go talk to Shane, we want, show me something new. What do you got that's new with that zero what do you got that's new and exciting uh we go down the speeds we talk about hey what's what seems to be everybody doing with the new bikes now because we're going to start doing the some motors that are coming up. yeah so we're going to start talking about that come probably more for sturges but we're going to start showing you all the new things for the new you know for the road glide and the street glides since they change the fairings and everything else like that we're going to let you know what what is available because a lot of the stuff like right now we heard that you can't even get an amp right now Far and speakers are a little different so a lot of them are saying we're in the next month or two you might it's going to take them about six months to get all that stuff so we figure most of them are probably going to wait more till sturgis you know there's a few clockworks has got a couple windshields out and i think they've announced the second windshield out now for the road glide and the street glide but by the time sturgis comes they'll have a dozen of them different colors and everything else for you but it takes a while to get all that production made and get it here some stuff's made in America. Some of the stuff's coming from China and Japan. And not from Clockworks, though. No, well, not from Clockworks. But coming from different manufacturers. So they were saying some of the things that they should have when you were talking about all the stuff they shouldn't have at a rally, a masseuse. Now, there's one, Tina, Dr. Tina. She's a chiropractor. She's really good. We've been to her several times. And she's, we we're trying to think if she was in Leesburg. I think she I think might. she was. I don't know if she's coming this year. Now, we should get her phone number. Yeah, I think she gave it to me. I think that's look for it and see. Uh, because she was in Leesburg and she was under the tent with the vet with the, the, the bands and stuff. Panama City is where she oh, was. Oh, yeah, Panama City. I think she might have been in Leesburg at Gators, but we couldn't remember for sure. So, so she'll have to get a hold of her. She's always at the Myrtle Beach at Beaver Bar. And uh, so, but I mean, she charges 50 bucks and but she does a great job of adjusting you. She's got a massage gun that she can do a little bit on you if you want. I don't know if that's any extra or not. I never yep. get it done. Dr. Tina. I don't know where she's actually from. I would assume she's more from the. Well, where is area code? Wow. So while well, she looks that up, I'll talk <laughs> a little bit more while she's looking up to figure out where she's at. Maybe we'll call her and ask her where if she wants if she wants any rallies coming up. But she really does a good job. Uh, I think Panama City might have had a chair massage people there before, uh, and the dealership might have had them at one time. But see, a lot of times like that, when I look at when we go buy a couple of those, they're wanting like stupid money. They're wanting like ten dollars. They pretty much want for an hour. They want like a hundred bucks if you stood for the whole hundred. And for a chair massage, I ain't paying a hundred dollars for an hour. Well, well, I know it's hundred dollars. It almost seems like it's a dollar a minute. So for ten minutes, it was ten dollars. Yeah, if it's a dollar a minute. Sixty minutes would be sixty bucks. Yeah. But a lot of times like that, you don't know how good the person's going to do. It's not a full body massage. So, you know, don't know, but that's, you, but it's not a bad idea. If you could get a really good one to come, we had one in California that he's really good. He used to do uh, the sports players too. It was, but he did a great job. If you had like my shoulder, if I get back there, he could probably fix my shoulder. If I could live through the pain of him doing it. 
you want me to just try to call him? Yeah, just call him. He's in Florida. Shit. It might be. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. Oh, there's Danny. And so, Lynn. while she's on the phone there, I'll talk to her for a while. If she answers. ring a dingy dingy One ring dingy <laughs> That's for people that are really old. Like us. Back in the laugh pin days, if you know what laugh pin is. She's probably not going to answer. She doesn't really know really what But, so that's kind of what we got. I don't know why she's got any more clients or not. Yeah. And can you see what Rowan says? I don't know. I'll put my glasses on. I'll see. Hey, Dr. Tina. This is Bob and Sam, the YouTube channel. We were just wondering where you were going to be this year, and we couldn't remember if you were in Leesburg or not. So it was a call back. So five nine nine eight two two seven. Thank you. Bye. I'm on the air. <laughs> so the, one of the things that we were oh, so this question was, would it be worth buying some land and opening a, a like a dirt track? The problem in America is because he's from Australia. The problem with America is is insurance. So that's your first big place is you've got to have it insured so people don't sue you. Okay. And then if you're going to have food and stuff, you've got to get permits for food unless you bring food trucks in. If you're going to have alcohol for the fans, then you got to get an alcohol. you got to get a liquor license. Like food and barbecue. Yeah, that's what he's saying. But I'm oh. just saying, he's saying about buying oh. land and see, would it be worth it? I would say no. Now, if you live there, maybe. But see what a lot of that things are, just like in Sturgis, we, we lost the flat track. Nobody's opening that up. And the problem of that is, is you really, like in Sturgis, they couldn't make enough money during Sturgis to keep it, to, to, to make it worthwhile. Second, it's not enough people around there that race year round to make it to where you could have a track year round on it. So for instance, we have one in Sturgis, which is called the Jack Pine Gypsies. They do hill climbs. They do dirt track there. You can look at Sturgis next year. You can look at that. Now, that is an organization. The Jack Pine Gypsies is a club, and they're actually the ones that started. That's, if you know, Pappy Hoyle. Pappy Hoyle and the Jack Pine Gypsies was the original people that started the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Came from the trails and so on. Yeah. We used to have that in Missouri. We had a place that used to rent, this is going back, you could rent a, a Honda 50 or a 70 and you go out on trails and ride it and stuff. Same thing. You'd have to have insurance for all that. And then if people wreck the bikes and all that, you got to fix them all. So I don't know. I would say something to look at would be to go someplace like Branson, Missouri, and check into all the different things they do there. And see if you could find the owners of those businesses. There's nobody that does motorcycle, but I mean, they got one that's a Jeep ride. They've got uh, go karts and all these other things, off road vehicles that they take people on. Where I'm at, where we're at, they they have some tours with off road vehicles, but they also sell. So I don't. I I would say probably not, because when you go to a rally, the bad thing about going to motorcycle rallies is the people that go you know some people come to rallies and all they want to do is ride their motorcycle they just come to ride and at night they hang out with their friends and that's all they do now uh, you have other people that come to the rallies that are drunk from the moment they get there to the moment they leave time. and they just have a good time then you have some people that come and they just want to listen to concerts they want to come hear the big bands playing they want to hear all that stuff like that uh other people are going there and they think they're going to hook up with some woman you know, maybe 1% of people get lucky and get that. Uh, so it's, that's kind of, and then you get the people that are just a variety of stuff. You know, they don't, like us, you, we want to experience the whole rally. You know, we're not, not so much a concert person, but I mean, we might spend, a, you know, we would spend a few minutes listening. We heard George Thorogood last year because we were at the chip, but we didn't do as much. But with our case, we do our riding before you get here. We've already done our riding. So in your case, you, you're, you're going to be capturing that while you're here. Normal person would do that during a rally. So to have extra things, that's what's hard to attract people. For instance, if you go out to the hill climb, you think Jack Pine Gypsy is right off the highway. There's probably, you're going to keep that up all night or you need to go in the other room? That should be okay now. She sneezes usually about 10 or 15 times. So we go, so you'll, there, there's probably only a couple hundred people watch this race. It's really sad. 
Uh, and we're we're trying to we're going to make a big push for this because we may have a Bob and Tam's night there and invite everybody out. It could cost you. It's like ten or fifteen bucks, twenty bucks to get in and watch the races all day. And the hill climb is pretty neat, and we want to be there for the hill climb. And I'm not so much for the motorcycle racing around the back. Uh, the hill climbing is what I want to be about. Check out. And uh, so they have stuff every night of the rally. They've got bike stuff going on and different events. And but once again, everybody's so busy doing other. Hey, I want to go to Deadwood. I want to gamble. I want to go over here. I want to go out to out to the Badlands. the Badlands. That's a day's ride. By the time you get out there, do the stuff, come back, it's pretty much going to take the majority of your day up. You'll have the nightlife left, but you won't have much other than that. And you go out to Devil's Tower. That's pretty much a good day's of it going on. And we're going to show you all this stuff. So that's the point you got to look at. But then if you want to do, like, for instance, before Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, what do we have at the Buffalo Chip? They have the Adventure Bike Week. There you go. You can actually ride bikes for free that they have some test tracks and stuff right there at the Buffalo Chip that I think it's BMW. It might cost you. I don't know if it's free or not, but... Uh, They've got courses you can take, and they take you out on trails and all this stuff. So it's Adventure Bike Weekend. It's about, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, I think Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Four, four, four days. Four, it might be a week or five days. We'll be talking about that soon. When we get to Sturgis, we'll be talking about when that's going to be. Uh, it's Adventure Bike. you got to have an Adventure Bike. You can't come there and rent one. Uh, you would have to bring your own, or you can do some of the events that they have that they're taking out on trails and stuff like that. There was a cost, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if that guy's still coming this year or not. But they have BMW, takes a bunch of people out for a little while. I don't know, it's like an hour ride, come back. They had a bunch of different uh, demo they, trucks, yeah. demo rides. They had, I think Triumph was there and Pan America was there oh, last was year. There. So, I mean, you know, it's if you're into that, and some people are into off riding more than street riding. So yeah. that would be a good thing to go to. And that's it's a couple of weeks before Sturgis. I yeah. think it's like the middle of June, July. Yeah. July, July. in July, because because before right before Sturgis is the three wheel rally that they have in Deadwood, which ends up being more of a Can Am rally, <laughs> a Spider rally, than, than a Polaris it's three rally. Three wheels, isn't it? Some have <laughs> steering wheels. Well, those are the Polaris's or the side by sides, whatever they call them. Talking to each other, Glenn Co has a night. <laughs> I said, yeah. Because uh. somebody asked us that too before. Would we be interested in doing tours while we're in Sturgis? Well, during the rally, no. But I mean, taking people out and showing them stuff. And um, it's tough to do that because you really can't, like, we're, and everybody should be putting this on their calendar. We'll be talking about it soon again. That in May, uh, right before 2025, before Memorial Day weekend, we're going to have a ride up the coast of California. It'll be, if you, even if you rode that ride, it would be the most exciting ride you've ever been on. Uh, you'll see things that you've never seen before. Uh, the ride's a good ride. There's some jackknives. There are some places we're going to do five or 10 miles an hour because the road's so sharp. You're on South the cliffs of California with animals on the road. But it's it's just places that we'll see, places that you'll do, plus the people you're with. Well, we're looking at no more than 10 bikes to be able to control that. There is no charge for what we do. We're not a tourist group. We're not some of these. Some YouTubers are out here selling packages. I ain't selling no packages. What we do is we we get ready to do this. We'll have a set ten rooms booked, and we'll have nine rooms because one of them will be ours. And we put that information out and say, here's what it is. Here's the cost. If you're interested, you call each one of these. You tell them this number at the hotel, and they'll give you our rate. And then and then we'll tell you the dates that we're going to go, and then how are you going to get california if you're on the east coast or midwest and then we'll try to get some rates we're going to try to see if we can get eagle rider mm -hmm. to give us a deal for anybody that would want to bring a bike out um, or maybe home yeah. bikes too. and then we have some people that said they're going to trailer their bike out we have a few people that want to come out to our shop out in arizona drop their bike off but drop their trailer and vehicle off there and they want to ride in with us from arizona into california which would add to another day another hotel expense yeah uh to the deal and but you can stay like one couple that we talked to just this weekend said they have deals through Hampton Inn. I said, well, you could do that. You can go to Hampton and you, you can book it. To. We tell you what time I'm leaving. I'm pretty punctual on my times. If I say we're rolling out at eight o'clock, we're rolling out at nine o'clock. That's the time I roll out. Plus, we give you a little map of where we're going. So other than an unexpected stop, which sometimes that happens, 
one time we went by this place that said elk park and we turned our head and there was 500 elk in the park <laughs> quick that 180 and we pulled down there and we've seen the elk next time the couples we had some people that were following behind us when they because we would tell people they were like you don't have you could be the most experienced rider in the world and you want to hang those turns and be like i am on on iron mountain or you might be some couple that hey i just want to ride nice and easy enjoy my time and that's great and we'll tell you where we're going to stop and uh, if we stop at a gas station where you'll see the bikes sitting out at the pumps or we'll be the bikes will be out by the road so you, you won't pass us up so it's pretty easy to keep track well this couple was behind us probably only i don't know less than an hour behind us so we got to the next stop and they pulled up and we're like wow did you guys see the elk and they're like what elk did you see that sign that said elk park yeah i think we did was there not any elk in the park we didn't see anything then we went there last year and there was actually it was great it was two herds and the males were fighting they were throwing sand or throwing bush and weeds and grass on the other one and finally the other one backed up and took its females and left and so it was kind of neat and uh so you never know and but you might go by there and it might not be any there we don't know that's called the sidewinder i'm assuming that's what he's talking about in arizona makes me think of the road to, he says to oatman if you're coming from kingman to oatman yeah. that's the road and that's a fun ride too uh we've done that probably 50 times that's the most challenging ride we have out where we're at part of the old route 60 that is the longest consecutive strip of the route six the original route 66 goes from tupac to slugman arizona yeah we ride that too yeah not very challenging but it's just fun to be i love route 66 is just my thing it's just i love history i love that kind of just that era is the 50s and the 60s and the people coming out it's just that's just cool i mean there's a lot of things we, we pass this crater all the time out on route 66 and we never stop there just never have time tony never have time to what no. stop at that crater out there by oh uh, yeah on route 66 by out by uh roy's and boy yeah never stop we look at it we drive by we look at it when we drive by there's something you just don't have time for it suck your thug got your water over there They've been on a little over an hour. We've got 53 people on it. There you go. So pretty exciting. And uh, so that's going to be coming up. So if you want to do a ride with us, you need to start thinking about that that far out. So we're giving everybody over a year's notice on this to start thinking about it. Put it on your calendar or uh, things like that. And if it's a rainy week, we were going anyway. And when we were up there that time, it was kind of cool. We had winter gear on and, gear. and uh, chaps on. We had a broken wrist. Yeah and uh so that was fun that's a whole nother story but we made it and uh, it was a great ride we, well i've got it set up i've got a bunch of i didn't have any video well, i do have a little bit of video of a big old moose or elk that was there that i filmed gigantic thing and i don't know where i got the footage from but when i was looking through my pictures i clicked on it and it was a video i'm like oh crap it's on a bit i've got the video per pretty much done but i wanted to sit down with my buddy art because he went with us and the other couples i don't know if we could chase them all down they're they're Older, some of them are older. I don't know if they're even all alive anymore. Well, too, one of them got divorced. Anymore, anymore, yeah. <laughs> so that happens. Well, and, Jesse and, and Pam are still. Yeah. I see. And so Facebook. we wanted to sit down and in the shop and talk about this video with the pictures flashing up in front of us to talk about this ride and what we did and all this stuff. You know, some people, somebody said the other day said, "Oh yeah, two lane change or whatever." I'm not sure what those guys are called. They shot the video the other day, and I said, "That's right," but they don't stop anywhere. That's to me, that's not the fun that's of true. of doing an event. Uh, now we do Iron Mountain and those highway. Yeah, I'm I'm on there to do the ride as a, as a challenge, but to make a fancy video of us just riding down the road with a drone and all that stuff isn't it. It's the things you see to stop and show you this last trip. We, me and her went by ourselves. You know, we seen gray whales. We seen orcas. We, we seen a bike. bear. We were in a car this trip. We seen a bear, uh, an eagle. We seen a bunch of elk. Turkeys. Uh, oh, those seals, gray whales, orca whales. It was a pretty cool trip. Uh, lighthouses, all kinds of stuff. Go through a lot of these old beachy towns along the uh, along the coast. Uh, drive along the cliffs. It's just it's just priceless. Uh, it's just it's another one of my great rides. And what I like about it is because it's it's a long ride. You know, it's I don't even know how many miles it is from Santa Monica, but we, we pretty much stay on the one the whole way. We get off on the one hundred one. Uh, a couple times because the one's not there and uh some of it has slides we're hoping by may of next year they're talking spring of this year summer of this year 
that the one should be completely back open. You never know about landslides. But we figured if we do it in May, then the, the, the odds of having the one completely open should be good. Where's Coco Bay? Uh, is that is, is they talking about where we went up there and the the monsoon was at? No, that's right. small. Uh, Coco, there's a Co Coco Beach down here in Florida. It says Coco Bay. I don't know. Neil says that he just talked to one of his buddies this afternoon and said in Coco Bay and says to contact him and he can tell you or help you get lodging when you get there. Google it. Go on your phones and ask where Coco Bay is at. Where is Coco Bay? Port Charlotte. We're here now. Oh, results for it's down. Oh, maybe if we would have went to the Keys, it's down there. Coco Bay, Cuba. So that might be a possibility in another trip. Uh, never know what we might do. Uh, so you need to look at your comments. Let's see if where everybody's at. What's going on? Uh, Peter's on. Where am I at? Craig's on. Hey, how are you doing? Where are you guys at? Uh, we are bikes by blood. See you out in Deadwood. So I guess he's going out there. Wisconsin's warming up. I have to go, but I'll replay after I take a shower or have a ripper. Bye, Rowan. Coco Bay is in Oregon. Coco's Bay. Oh. And then that is Peter. Peter said hi. Rowan says catch you later. Coco's. Coco's Bay. I don't know. I think Coco's, but I don't didn't know where it was. Went through there on my epic journey ride. Yep. <laughs> you had a epic journey, Mike. Uh y'all still haven't adopted me yet. Are you Tony, are you gonna go to Panama City? I know we saw you there a couple years ago. So this is just across the border from California, Oregon. It's up against the coast. All right. Been there. So I guess it's there's also one down in the Keys, it looks like. So we were gonna do that too, and that just she never really talked much about it anymore, so I didn't think any too much about it. Uh it's just hard to say. Well, we wasn't know we didn't know for sure whether we were going to spring plane. Yeah. So maybe in another year we could be able to go down there, rent a car and go down to the keys and say we've been there, done that. <laughs> and uh I didn't realize I was thinking the keys was more on this side. I didn't realize you had to go almost okay. all the way to Miami and then go down. I was thinking it was more on this side, like and go down. And then when I looked at the map the other day, it was way over there by Miami. So it's a long haul from here to get there. So you'd be almost better to fly into Miami, get a car, and drive down the keys that way. Pick a time, it's not so busy. I think, the, I don't know if the, if the Fantasy Fest is still going on. I see a bunch of pictures on YouTube, so and Facebook, of Fantasy Fest. So I don't know if that's, I don't want to be down there when that's going on. It'd be way too many people, way too expensive. So, so. Lisa and Joe's on. You know who that is? I'm assuming it's the people we went and ate with. Yeah. Hey, I got something right. <laughs> he remembered. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to Leesburg. Yes. We're going to Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Whoever asked that. So the next few rallies are Leesburg, Peter. Panama City, Myrtle Beach, Sturgis. There's Sturgis. Home. Uh, yeah, we're going home. And then we go to Ocean City first. And then Mike's Blues and Barbecue, right? Yeah. yeah. So and then maybe by Toberfest. Yes, maybe by Toberfest. So we just have to look at all that and see if that's all going to click, click, right. And uh, so we'll see how it all goes. Well, typically, Ocean City is on for sure. Bikes lose a barbecue. We had to just double check with them. But I'm assuming that everything will be the same as it was last year. So that should be no problem. And by Toberfest, we just got to call them and see. When I talked to the guy in Daytona, he was like, yes, we want you here, want you here. We thought Teddy wanted to do something. Obviously not. Yeah. And so heck with them. And. I don't know what's going to happen there. They've got the new general manager there and the new marketing person. And I really worry about the dealership. I'm really, we had a great relationship with Shelly Rossmeyer. And, no Milwaukee. And, but I know it's going to be next year. Mike Toberfest will tell you a little bit about how things are going to go, but it, it's a, that's a big complex and there's a lot going on. We'll still be there covering the vendors and stuff. I just don't know what more we'll do with the dealer. And it is what it is. And uh, you can reach out to us, I guess. I mean, you know, you know, it's always we're more than willing to work with them. But I mean, it's it's hard for us to keep going back and going back and going back and going back. And it's like, I don't know. Do they not want us here? It's, you know, so they can always contact us. Yeah. We don't have any hard feelings. It's just no. we look at a lot of the dealerships like that. We we look at like birds here. 
when we, we said something to him about it, a dealership who was Adamac in Florida here that kind of gave us the brush off last year and uh, gave me a hard time when I was filming a bike that was in the showroom. And it's like, you don't screw you, dude. I don't need to, I don't need to film. There's plenty of other bikes I can film and I was dealerships. So at that point, we don't give a crap's butt about Adamac anymore. So I don't, I wouldn't buy a toothpick from them. So that, and that's why, and so when I was telling that to the birds up here and they're like, you know, you got full reins here, whatever you guys want to do, carry in over at the other one. And he says, you know, everything's great. I'm like, yeah, we've had no problem. You know, we're not asking for anything. And what we look at is they get free advertising. And that's what I said. He gave us the whole showroom and let us come in early. They turned the radio off so we could talk and stuff in there. Yeah, it open it. until it was nine, I guess. Yeah, and they, we got there at 8.30. Set all up. And we had half the video done before they opened. And they kept the radio down until we got all done. So that way he had a good video. And uh, and we worked out real good. We're very happy. We're probably going to go over there Wednesday to the Barracuda. Bert's Barracuda, yep. and we're going to eat over at OCC because they got great alligator and uh, probably have some alligator bites. I don't know what else. <laughs> and we'll good. get to see George. Yeah, George is going to be hanging out there. Yeah. So, uh, oh, a bunch of stuff going on, apparently. Yeah, a bike build, shoot. and uh, maybe we'll be we'll showing be you. Dead in the biker magazine. There you go, Dave's, Dave's here, man. And show you some of that that's going on over there that you'll get to see next week. So we'll have some maybe some good content for you guys next week. Uh, <laughs> and then. We've got a video coming up here real soon. We're going to start our Sturgis series already. In between the rallies here, we're going to start talking about Sturgis. We've made a bunch of phone calls and all that kind of good stuff. And we're going to give you our predictions for the 84. And I can pass here. Checking out too. A couple people are leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? It's early. <laughs> you got stuff to do. And you're off. I don't know. It's late for you guys and still have way decent food. well we've been coming on see this is typically the time that we would have came actually right now would be the time that we would come on on a normal sunday it's five o'clock at home five six seven eight so five o'clock home eight o'clock east coast time so it's still early there because it's only it's five back home now it's yeah in so in arizona day. it's five o'clock five fifteen so it's early i don't like you guys are going to bed it's not like the people that are over this side where we get to the end of the rally and it's 10 or end of the show and it's 10 o'clock at night. So today, since we kind of figured everything was kind of screwed up and we were going to be stuck in the trailer here, we thought, you know, let's just come on, which I didn't wait till eight. I came on at seven, an extra hour early. And uh, that way we get done a little bit earlier and uh, get ready for bed. We're going to get up early tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. I have 416. Well, you're in almost the other side of the world. He's in, he's <laughs> Alaska. in Alaska time. There's my keys in Central Time. Uh, anyone going to Eureka Springs, Arkansas this week? I will see you there. Sorry, you guys won't be making it, Bob and Tam. Yeah. Which I'm sorry too. And and, and it's not a you know we may be there next year. Yeah. Because I don't know Good about the, the the which we haven't talked to anybody yet. So at Leesburg, I don't know. We've said something to the dealership about maybe a bike. We could get through our campground. We could still get a cabin. We still got another year, I think, on cabins next yep. year. So we could get a cab, and we would, but we'd be coming from Orlando, uh, from the Orlando area. We'd have to drive over there, so it'd be we wouldn't stay probably late at night. And so I can't stay at Windy Acres where we won't have a trailer. We won't be bringing the trailer with. Us. So that's a possibility there. Panama City, they well, they may things may change in Panama City. We don't know yet, but we, we're going to talk to them. They act like they almost were going to get us a condo this year, and we're like. We just want the RV spot. It's a place it's so, oh, well, that's no problem. So we may talk to them and see what they want to do. Now, Myrtle Beach, we don't have any real... Thanks, Andrew. But you got to talk to Stephen about it. I don't know, Stephen on? Yes. Uh, you got to talk to the dealership there. Uh, the people that were giving us a hard time, I guess they're gone. And he talks Kevin? to the owner. So I don't know if he wants to do anything with us with a bike. And I have no idea where we'd stay there. Uh. As I said, I don't think Stephen has two bedrooms, but Richard might. <laughs> I don't know. You got to share with the dog. Yeah. Well, Stella's cute. I, I'd share room with Stella. <laughs> Richard on the night? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was earlier. And so, I don't know. That might be a possibility, too. So, I don't <laughs> know what. Because what... Richard always says, "You, I wish you could stay in my part, driveway, but he had HOA. So, we wouldn't yeah. have the trailer. <laughs> but I don't know if he'd want to invite us into his house. <laughs> Take up a dining room table with my editing equipment. Yeah, I know. Uh, you'd probably have to put us in the tent and sleep on the floor so he'd have a place to work. 
if he had a, a, a rally on the other side, we could stay in his trailer now. His new trailer he just bought. He just left. We could go there and stay. Well, that's down in Florida, though. That's what I'm saying. If there was a rally over in the Tampa area. Oh, yeah. Uh, We're old. We fit, we fit in the old people. Yeah. Uh, the 55 vacation, and older. Yeah, the vacation <laughs> retirement villages. He's next to the village. He's not in the village. He's no, he's, he's close outside. To oh, oh Stephen says, I have two bedrooms and no, no who? No dog, I guess. I don't no, know. No. <laughs> so, I don't know. Something like that might work out. I don't know. Uh, so we, we just have to see how we have to work all that out for next year. Because the idea is we want to start doing stuff in the shop. I just sold the boat. Yay! Is your daughter on? She's going to flip out. But I'm sure we might rent a boat. We might rent something when she comes out. I don't know. Uh, we do know people with boats, too. So maybe we can borrow somebody's boat. This guy might have a boat in the garage. Maybe I'll be giving him a free month's rent for letting us use the boat. <laughs> Well, as long as they don't come over the holidays. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll see what happens with it. Uh, so it's sold. That gives me a little extra cash now. I got to put $10,000 of it in a savings account. And uh, so we might be buying some bikes at the auction and start working on those two. Besides mine, I'm going to pull my heads off as soon as I get back and send those off to uh, Dark Horse <laughs> and get those all fixed up for me. So we'll be. That won't be till August. And I have some other things. I was actually, I was totally, I don't know if any of you watch Professional Monkey or not. I was totally blown away when he got to that arc welder out. I was uh, I was looking at him and I'm like, he ain't even he ain't never gonna show you his face. Because he just seen his hand uh, welding. I'm like, that's not him welding. Well then he got another shot when he pulled the helmet up. I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe that guy knows how to weld. He didn't do the greatest in the world, but he did an all right job. And I was like, I was very, very, very impressed. So I gotta talk to him when he gets to Leesburg. We gotta call him anyway, because he's gotta know yeah. he's helping us with the games. And uh, so we'll be advertising on both channels. No, HOA, Homeowners Association. And so that's that was so I got I got some welding I'm probably gonna have to do on my bike. I gotta do some work on my seat so it's permanently down, not flipping up on me. And uh, uh some other chopper. Welding. Yeah, so. chopper. And uh so I got my arc welder. I got a brand new one, never even used it yet. Make my make welder, I don't know. No, I did use the make welder to weld something on the ATVs one time, but it didn't do a very good job. It didn't have it adjusted right. And uh, make welder, you got, well, both of them. Hey, you that all that stuff on the side of the house, don't you? Yeah. That's what you kept all that metal for? Yeah. Is that what the ATVs came in? Yeah. Crates, metal crates. Yeah, so I, I was very shocked. Was too. Uh, Jim wanted them, and I never gave him a Jim. He, kept playing, he wanted them when he first got them. That was kind of rusty. No, not the metal crates, the ATVs. Oh, yeah, they're in the garage. I got to rebuild the carburetor. Yeah, David, David, so I have some ATVs. Get rid of those, and we'll have a little extra money there. Take that money and buy some and money. some extra room. Yeah. So we got that to do when I get home too. So I got a bunch of work. So the idea is when we get back to where we could start. Now we'll still drive the floor to Sturgis because Sturgis is like this. I love going to Sturgis and spending the two months there. Because there's so much coverage to do and the beautiful riding. And we're, we've got a, a new, uh, not a new subscriber, but a subscriber we met that lives up there. And he's going to take us out and show us rides that you don't know about. And we're going to be the only YouTube channel showing this to you up front before you come to the rental. Yeah. It pays to know people. That know people that know things do. And they be surprised. And people always say that. How do you guys know all this stuff? A lot of it is from you guys. Yeah. Somebody will come up to us and like Mammy's. They said, "Yo, you got to go eat at Mammy's in Myrtle Beach." And oh my gosh, we eat at Mammy's. We're going with uh, Richard's going to take us. And Stephen's going to take us another day. And and uh, so we're we're gonna, we'll get a, we get a fill of we Mammy's. did that last year. I could eat there every day anyway, so it's it's really great oh, breakfast. Grits are just a side bar. And, I ate grits the other day. They were okay, but they weren't Mammy's. Yeah, mm. great mm. place to eat. And so Hi, we Sean. went there. And. Are uh, you in so we'll see how Myrtle Beach goes. Uh, we also heard now that we talked a little bit about that the other day that where Bass Pro Shop is, where Hooters is at, and when Twin Peaks is, where we always do our lives from. Everybody loves Twin Peaks. Uh, that is where the, some of the vendor trucks are going to be. JP Cycles is going to be there. Somebody said Cyril, but when I looked on Cyril's, they didn't have the data. And uh, I think you tried to call. Didn't you try to call her? I think so too. And. Um, so, and then there's another truck there, a big truck coming. I can't think of the other one. Was. Uh, and they're going to be there. So there's going to be some vendors there. I wonder if Fair and Exchange will go up there because they know. Uh, they he already booked, Fair and Exchange already had a lot that they were there down. I think they're getting there. Oh, that's right. We're in the inlet, way down Yeah, there. they're down there by uh, where those restaurants we eat. Oh, you got to, you didn't bring your picture of your doggy. 
dead dog. Uh, I can get one. I don't know if she, could, she just hated that place for all those dead dogs. And then the other day, before we left, she goes, you know, I'm thinking about taking a picture of Charlie. I'm like, for what? I'm going to put it at that bar. I said, what bar restaurant? The dead, she, dog. dead dog. I said, you're going to leave a picture of Charlie on dead dogs bar. She said, yeah. I said, you told me when we were there, Charlie was still alive. She's like, she thought that was so bad. It's probably because Charlie was sick. So now she's going to leave a picture there of poor Charlie and dead dog. Great restaurant. Yeah. Just kind of a bad name. Sad story. Don't talk about my dog. <laughs> and uh, so, so then we want to fly back and forth so we can be home. And we, I'd love to get back into my, what I originally wanted to do is start building bikes for veterans. And we're still looking to do that. Uh, when we get to Sturgis, where we've got somebody we're supposed to talk to about helping us get a 501C. I just talked to the Badgers. They got theirs. Uh, as soon as we get a little more time to sit down and talk to them, I, uh, I'd like to see how they did the the 501c, how they, you know, did the paperwork and stuff, or if they paid somebody to do it too, or, you know, so seeing about all that. And because I want to do a 501c to where people, if you wanted to donate something, a motorcycle, or you want to donate money yeah. or whatever, then you could take it off your taxes. And that way it saves, makes, helps you out where you're helping out a vet. And then in our case, we're going to make $0. There'll be no expenses other than motorcycles and parts for the bikes and things like that, there'll be no, the shop won't be paid for it out of there. There won't be rent. There won't be electric. There won't be car tools or anything that I need that none of that will come out of the expenses that for building bikes. So it's mainly just buying the bikes, uh, building them and giving them away. And so we're looking, hoping to do that. And that'd be fun. I, I think I'm going to enjoy doing that. We've got the rack and, and uh, maybe we'll have some guest people, you know, maybe Amazon Animal come out and do spend a week with us and help with a bike or something like that. And it'll be kind of fun. And we're going to buy some wreck bikes that can't be fixed. And we're going to show you, we're going to tear them apart. And I'm going to show you how you can sell parts on motorcycles and how much money you can make. And so that'd be interesting. And I've done King that before. says he hasn't got nothing yet. What? King says he hasn't got nothing yet. Supposed to be getting something Monday. And supposed then... to be the stickers are supposed to come. Well, the, the the crash bar, we have no idea yet where it's at. They they had to order it from Hogwarts. Well, if the worst comes to worst, we should call Hogwarts tomorrow and tell them to bring it to freaking Panama City or wherever they're at next. If they ain't got one. Yeah. They don't ship directly to customers. So Hogwarts has to ship it to JP Cycles. Then when JP Cycles gets it, then they'll ship it out. So that's why Crash Bar hasn't came yet. That's the only thing we're waiting on there. And I got stickers coming. So one of the stickers the other day said it was already on its way. So I think it's they said Monday is when they're predicting that box will come. I have another set of stickers that are supposed to be coming, a they bigger don't. box that they haven't said it's shipped yet. So, but it's the same thing. It should only take two or three days to get it. Once they say it shipped. Uh, Pictures come up on my time hop all the time at Charlie. And then they come up on my daughter's thing. So we're always sending pictures back and forth at Charlie. So there was a good one. He was on the boat. And it just looked like he was smiling. And on the boat, he liked the water. Uh, exactly. Did you get my message? Sue's on. There's my girlfriend, Sue. My girlfriend, God, I won't Sue. Get this. Just left. And we're going to leave. It's your turn now to come out there. <laughs> See, with us, you got a free place to stay. You've got casinos. <laughs> she loves to gamble. Yeah. The boyfriend loves to gamble, too. Uh, easy checking in. There you go, easy. We can pick you up at the airport. So you don't need a car. Hogwarts. Not Hogwarts. Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah. Hogwarts. Not, not, uh, not Harry uh, Potter. Yeah, no Harry Potter. Here. Oh, that's Ryder X. He probably wanted to see if we were talking about him. He wasn't saying nothing. Mm. <laughs> Last year, we went out to Sturgis for two weeks, and we brought along our SXS. Well, see who is the people that we're, we ate lunch with. What was their names again? Oh, Joe and Lisa. Lisa said, I'd like to meet that Rider X guy. And we're like, <laughs> you did. did. He was at <laughs> when, she, thinks when we did the live she, there. she told him where everybody was sitting. And he's like, oh, that was him? <laughs> so you didn't make a very good impression on her. Well, I think I kept calling you Joe. So yeah. I don't think she got the fact that you were Rider X. Yeah. Uh Hogwarts shipped my new lids to my residence. Well, see, we ordered this through JP Cycles. <laughs> That's the issue. So what she needs to do is Monday, 
you need to call JP Cycles and have them do a search on it and see where it's at. And if it's still, they haven't shipped it yet, then we'll call Hogworks and ask them if they have it in stock. And then maybe we'll cancel the one from JP and just order from Hogwarts. And that's right. That the Sanibel influence that Lisa and Joe, Ryder X. So that's what she said. Ryder X. I didn't put the two together. Yeah. So you didn't do a very good impression <laughs> on her. So well, mainly she was life. laughing so hard. She thinks we when we do lives, it's just hysterical. She just thinks it's just overwhelming for her. <laughs> so when we ate that lunch, we I said go to lunch with them the other day. So I when we were eating lunch, I said, Well, are you are you done with us being you know, movie stars and all that. And she's like, well, that's not really what it was the live. It's the second jug. So she said, if there was another live, I would probably be laughing just as much as I did in the first one. It was just, <laughs> she was just hysterical. She was a we, little more calm this time. Yeah. The first time she was, and I'm like, we're just regular people. <laughs> we're not, nothing. She said she might ride the bull that comes up oh, out there, there at Leesburg. She yeah, said. they're going to Leesburg. So that'll be cool. And I think not this year they're going to Sturgis, just maybe next year. And so in so Leesburg, we'll be doing a live on main street on saturday for sure gotta figure out where i'm gonna do it at. and i'll probably come on about 11 so we can get a tape <laughs> on the street bob loves teasing me <laughs> is that right or x yeah uh well, we're gonna see him in myrtle beach i think he's going to myrtle beach right or x oh he said neil no not neil, neil. <laughs> i didn't have a heart attack bob, you're a legend. he was Oh, I don't know what we called him. Who? Rod King was Bob 2.0, and what was Ryder X? Bob, I don't know. See who knew exactly who said that. <laughs> uh, it was an alternative, Bob. Oh, what did they, what did he call well, him? He'll know in a minute. He'll write I it. Know. I wasn't there. So I went around, did something. or You were out there talking to a bunch of people. Yeah. Pass some cards out. <laughs> Get them to watch our channel. Leaving us alone. We're about 500 away from breaking 25,000 subscribers. About 500. Maybe that'll shoot us off. Who knows? I'm not worried about it. Did you get my phone message? I left you. I didn't. I guess not. Who called? Um, Karen. Did you? Is it a text or is it a message? Uh, so Dr. Tina wrote back, she is not going to do Leesburg this year, and my daughter is graduating college the same weekend as Panama City, so my next event will be Myrtle Beach. There you go. So, so the chiropractor will not be on. Uh, until murder. Murder, murder. Murder, murder. Beach. So she's going to write her back. So she's going to write us, think. You know some people. They know some people. They know some people. <laughs> and Well, that's one of the things, one of the things that I like more than, one of my things that I get out of this besides meeting you and giving out great information, is the context that we have. We have, what just like meeting Paul over there at, C at OCC Chopper, to get him on the channel, get an interview with him and stuff like that, talk about bikes and stuff like that. And uh, that we can do that to where a lot, you know, he's done it with a couple of YouTubers, but the average YouTuber probably, he's not going to waste his time with you. So you most of the time when you find people like this, you've got to have somebody recommend you like Jay Leno. We actually now finally have the actual mechanic of Jay Leno. So if nothing else, I which is it's still I'm okay with, but I really wanted Jay Leno to be there. Just to be able to get in the garage and film the bikes and the cars. But he was fill in Bob. He might have been I don't know what he said. I don't remember. and uh but because okay I'll look I, I I for years I looked for where Joe uh Jay Leno's Jay garage, Leno's garage was at I was there I know it's at a, it's an abandoned hangar at, at an airport. So it's got to be around the Burbank area because he always used to pick cars up when he used to drive into the Burbank studio. He isn't there anymore. And uh, so it had to be somewhere around there. And I, I drove around the airport and I looked at a lot of buildings. Of course, he ain't going to have a sign out there that says Jay Leno's Garage. So I could have been right there and not had it. So we, we finally got the mechanic of him and we're going to call him when we get back home. And so hopefully I'll get that interview Hopefully with that. If not, I'll get the head mechanic, which probably is good too, because the head mechanic knows everything about everything. Oh, you're doing that. Oh, you're talking, and it's getting all. You should your... have turned the microphone on. Well, I went. I didn't know how to spell masseuse. It's with massage. Go on. End it. Do right later. So that's kind of where I forget where. Oh, Jay Leno's girl. 
So that's kind of the things that we find because we we were just talking to somebody. I don't know where we were even at. And we were like, you know, we had this guy that was one of the guys that worked for Jay Leno. And they said, well, do you want Jay Leno's mechanics, the actual phone number? And so I think that while we were there, they sent an email or a text to the guy and said, hey, you need to talk to these guys when they contact you. And he wrote back and said, sure, no problem. But because somebody recommended us. So that's what's cool. And we thought that was with Teddy Morris, too, that it would, which Teddy was always really nice to us, but he kind of wants the dealership to be ran by the management that's there. So because we had like two people send stuff to Teddy before he even got down to the dealership that uh, like somebody sent one to him and said, hey, this is this is some cool people and took a picture with us, him and said, you need to talk to Bob and Tam. So then when I was talking to Teddy, I said, did you get a, a picture from so-and-so with us? And he's like, mm, yeah, I did. So, well, he wants us to do stuff with you, too. So, fun, 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 fun. So, we'll see how that all works out. And, uh, but that's one of the things I really like because it's just so many. And there's so much places we really want to go that we haven't had a chance to because a lot of things, like right now, we can go up to North Carolina. Uh, Rick Rack's got a shop up there. Uh, Rusty Wallace, where they build uh, uh, Country Time. Is it Country Time Choppers? Country? Custom Country Choppers. Yes. Yeah. They've got a shop that they invited us to give us a few full tour, full tour of it. And we have a couple other places like that, but it's a lot of times like now you, it's just the weather's not really good up there. The, the drag the trailer up there and all that. And so, yeah, so there's just, I'd like to do the smoke out, which I don't know if we'll ever do the smoke out. Problem is it's way over here and to, to bring the motorcycle, the <laughs> chopper and all that stuff out. It just, it probably isn't going to ever work. Uh, East Coast stuff, it's going to have to end up being flying. I don't want to put any more miles on my truck. Uh, the other thing is we're gone so much. We left here in February. What day did we leave in February? February 11th. And that we won't before be. Before that. We left the 9th this year. February 9th we left, and we will not be home till sometime towards the third or fourth week of August. Been on the road all this like time. August 20th probably we'll get home. So you just hang around a couple days after this rally's over to kind of get a lowdown of what's going on, what, you know, this and that and figure out who wants us next year there and uh catman has got a new owner they're almost sold out i can't believe it and uh thanks to bob and tam everybody wants to stay with bob and tam <laughs> and uh, kind of special the trailer was rocking there it was got no jacks underneath it or no anything. you it's just don't on wheels you hooked up the truck you can't take it too much alarm and the truck will go off <laughs> you wonder we'll be rocking in here if the trailer's rocking don't be knocking that's on a van Bands are rocking. Don't be don't knocking. Come, don't come a knocking. Yeah, it's a seventies thing. I don't know who that was. Mm -hmm. Time crits twenty years subscribers for the rally. Says no drunk Mexicans in my three bedroom cabin in Palmdale. Secluded by acres and it's free, free, free. Just click it, Chris Johnson. Oh, that girl. Me. That yeah, I told you that the other day. That's we just wrote this just now. Oh well, they wrote the other day, didn't they? Right and say something about that cabin. Yeah. Uh, I already looked it up. It's oh, kind that's of that's one in Clueville. Yeah, or Clueless. Yeah, so we looked at that. Clueless town. And he invited it because he's got. So a, he must be he's on got a, now. He's got a condo that he doesn't really use. It's more for friends to go to use. So he invited us that we ever wanted to use that condo. Uh, it could be something good to if we wanted to come down and do like the keys, stay, start there, and then go from looking there. Looking for speakers. That's true. Lisa wanted to know if Joe got new speakers on his bikes. Remember, they were all out there after the Twin Peaks. They were all listening to the yeah. stereos. I think he was wanting to go with what I have in mind, the Rockford. I got to find out what series it is. I forget what series I have. Because when you want, when you, this isn't a stereo video, but when you're looking at stereos for your bike, speakers and an amp, two things that you need to ask yourself. One is, do I do a lot of highway riding or do I just put around town with it and I want to show off? That's your two questions. So in my question, we do more highway riding than we do putting around town. I'd rather enjoy a nice ride than versus riding up and down Main Street all day. Or uh, riding up the A1A down by, by Main Street or, or, you know, just, you know, short ride. So if you want to do a short ride, go put all the base of that you want in the world and whatever you want. But if you want to drive on the highway, you need to forget the base. Because once you hit about 40 miles an hour, that base is about two miles behind you. So you're wasting it. So like in our case here, we can do 90. We've been that we've done 90 miles an hour on the motorcycle with the stereo on, with our helmets on, and she can hear the radio without headphones. And no problem. Where before, she had no idea what song was on. 
Sometimes I could make it out. And sometimes I'd be singing the song and it's like, oh, that's not the song. <laughs> you set up or you're they cutting your face off. Well, it's because it's weird because it's too big. There's a lot of writing in that. Uh, I, I don't know where I'm at now. Hang on. Look at reading emails. Uh, I watched Marie and Eli and he went live and said that he's not doing Myrtle Beach because he didn't get a permit to set up and they don't want us bikers there if you need to reach out to Eli. Which is fine. Where is he usually at? He moves around. Well, see, for a while there used to be at the... the uh, no. He was at uh, the one that sounds like Broken Spoke. Remember, he used oh, to be... Oh, Spokes in, and Bones. He used to be inside there. That's right. And now, then he was at the Rat's Hole, too. Yeah. He dropped the Rat's Hole last year, and he just did that. So I don't know. Which, Daytona don't want us there, either. 90% of the motorcycle rallies out here do not want us there. And, and you'll say, well, how about... How about Leesburg? Okay. Most of Leesburg wants us there. But you watch when you yes, come to Leesburg, walk down the street and show me, tell me how many stores are closed on Saturday. Because they're scared of the bikers. We just get we just left that uh where we go to that bike thing Saturday. Arcadia. Arcadia. Same thing there. I actually want I was gonna buy something probably. I didn't know what it was, but it had this really cool they had an MTV flag yeah, in yeah. there. Remember they, the one they used to shoot uh, Wave at the beginning of when MTV came on. They had the astronaut, but it was just a flag. And they also had an astronaut there, a little miniature astronaut with a helmet on. I thought it was a real helmet. And I'm like, that would be cool. I would love to have those two. Open, open. Doors locked. But today, the hours were, it's open on Saturday. But there was a couple of places like that that was completely, man, bikers were afraid of them. Uh, Myrtle Beach, yes. Myrtle Beach is probably the more likely one that doesn't want us there. You don't have to go through Myrtle Beach. There's a bypass. It's actually better to ride on than it is to ride up and down. And there's no coast there. To, to ride where Black Bike Week does the other part where, what's that road that's right in front of the hotels? You think, whatever. Oh, in Myrtle Beach? Yeah. I think it's called Beach Boulevard. There's nothing there. There's one place that sells food. The rest is all hotels. No place Same to park. Condos. You can park in between a few of these hotels. None of the hotels allow motorcycle parking inside the, the, the garages and stuff. So it's like, why stay there? Uh, but probably where the Beaver Bar, uh, Suck Bang Blow, Merle's Inlet. Merle's Inlet there is probably one of the best party areas because there's so much going on. You can walk to all that stuff. And Judy Boone's is down at the end of that. Yeah. Great place, great to, place eat. to eat. Smorgasbord. Buffet. So... Devin Mike, we're leaving Port Charlotte tomorrow morning and going to Orlando. And they just left Orlando and are going back to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> but they're coming to Leesburg. So we'll see. So you when you look at this, like it, like for instance, the same thing with Amsoil Adam and Mexi Philly, Eli, they're vendors. They Most really the don't get out and see what Most we see what as you people. What we see is what you're going to see when you come to a rally. What the vendor sees from a vendor's point is what they see in sales at the location that they're at. So they don't get to see how many people are at the dealership. They don't get to see how many people at Barefoot Landing or wherever they might be. Wherever they're not. They, they, yeah. If they're not there, they don't, they have to work. You know, they might get off at the end, but most of the, most vendors, just like uh, Adam and uh, Eli, they might go out to eat after their close, uh, close up, but they don't, not normally, not saying they don't. Because sometimes Adam will zip down to Main Street or something in Daytona and, and film that or something like that. But typically during the rally, you can't get away. If you're busy, you can't get away because you're trying to make a business. It's Ocean Boulevard, not Beach. Okay. You've been told. Okay. So Ocean Boulevard, there's nothing on that street. There's nothing worth seeing. Why the Black Bike Week hangs out down there, they're stupid. There's nothing down there to see. Oh, we rode down there. It's a, it's a boring, straight road. You can't hardly see the water half the time because the stupid hotels are blocking it all. If you're staying in one of those hotels, it's probably pretty nice. You can walk right out to the beach and, and have a good time. You know, those issues or what? It's not stripping. <laughs> Getting sick again? No. So Never got over being sick. Yeah. So, I don't know. <clears throat> well, it's the same thing. Stupid to have a black bike week in the first place. Make bike Well, kind of like in Daytona. They don't really have a black bike week. They do have some events, which we didn't film this year. I forgot. We got all about going down by driving down there. But I found out it's only really Friday and Saturday. They don't do it the rest of the that time. last week. Yeah. Second week. And uh, so they still come down they, down Main Street and all that stuff. And they're riding their bikes and stuff because, you know, this isn't white bike week that we're having. It's it's whatever color you uh, want to be. You can come on down. You can paint your face any color you want. You can ride up and down the streets. 
Nobody's going to say nothing to you. Doesn't matter what kind of bike you have either. Some people crap if you got a, a thing that's got a steering wheel on it. It's not called a motorcycle, which I kind of agree to that too. And, um, Can Am has handlebars. Yeah. That's what I said. If it's got handlebars on it, yeah, at least it's a little bit more. Well, really, what? Well, can't really say it here because most of these states don't allow, don't require a motorcycle. So I was going to say, well, if you had to wear a helmet, then it's like, for instance, we ride in her Mustang convertible. We ride that, we don't wear a helmet. There's no law against that. No law to say you have to. But Myrtle Beach is a lot like Daytona. A uh, very similar style of rally. Not as many vendors there, but same kind of atmosphere. Uh, Leesburg. Uh, there's a few more rides probably around Leesburg. Uh, around they the lakes. They do it back in like the that. old movies, didn't they? Right. Writer X says, I wouldn't advise painting your face, though. <laughs> I said, well, what, was it, what did they used to call that? Blackface. Is that what it was? I don't know. I know they, there was a name. Somebody, there was a picture going around one time. It was Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. When they were in college, they did that. Which I, it could be true. It could be not. I don't really care. No. I mean, it was a big thing about that. Three-wheel car. <laughs> and, All right. Good night, Neil. Neil's going to, he ain't going to bed. No, he's not going to bed. It's he's probably got another meeting. One o'clock in the to. afternoon. That's there. the busiest man that doesn't get paid that I know. <laughs> he does a whole lot of stuff for everybody else. He's running, he's running, he ought to run for governor. Yeah, he Alaska. pretty much runs Alaska. <laughs> the game and fish board and the moose hunting correlation and the VFW and the hog association. Neil does a little bit of everything. We've been on almost two hours. How's the writer? He's saying bye to Neil. How many people get on? 60? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. So maybe we'll stay on exactly. I don't have a video for Monday. Before the end of the live. We'll be back three times before the end of the live. Not if we get off here in just a few minutes. Now it sounds like. You sound like some of my friends. <laughs> Did you do so much? So, I mean, it's, it's, this is a lot of fun. We got the bikes in the back. If you haven't seen that, that's her bikes over here. She rode it this week. If you didn't watch the video, you missed it. Cause I filmed actually, didn't film her going, but I filmed her coming back. She rode in front. Cause she had, I knew, I knew where we were going. We were coming back here. So I knew how to get here. Sometimes it's like, I don't know where well, I've been going. using my phone on my and zero charger there. And, uh, and it talks to the radio. And he's still missing his turns. No, not on the motorcycle video. On the truck I do. All right. What did Karen say? Oh, Karen, I still never looked up your thing. It wasn't Eli that didn't get the permit. It was the place he was setting up, so hoping to get his money back. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I guess not good. If you don't get his money back. Well, you should. <clears throat> well, see, some of those places like that, they want to give it to you for next year, which kind yeah. of sucks. Because uh, you're already out that money for this year. Because I think it's a promoter. If he if he's at the broken not the broken spoke what's that called spokes and bones yes and uh, I think it's a promoter that does does the inside well see the only thing about Myrtle Beach too what screws it up is you're in two different counties and three different cities and that's why everything starts different you deal with different people and if you're more down by which he probably doesn't want to be down there but, but the Beaver Bar uh, that's really where probably one of the best places to be at. She's pretty, she pretty much leaves you alone. She doesn't hound you or nothing like that. She sells you your spot. You're there, you do your thing and you go home. And so if I was going to, if, if I was them and I had a booth similar to their size, I would be at the Beaver Bar. That seems to be the dealership the most has had issues. The guy that, the, Stephen. It's not that, the owner guy. I think it's the guy that runs the lot back. There. And we have so many complaints and I've seen the guy that they're yelling at, at the vendors. That guy, Stephen, needs to be fired. They need to find somebody else. Stephen, you want to book the, the vendors out there. Stephen has hands full last year. He could do that instead. He wouldn't you, be out you there directing party. You get to ride around on the golf cart. You yeah. don't have to stand up there in the hot sun. You should be taking care of the vendors. Yeah. And, uh, but that guy that they have, everybody complains about the guy. And that's why half the vendors have left. Because they don't want to deal with them. So that's that kind of sucks. Uh, down a barefoot landing. Well, see, that's where they were kind of at before was barefoot landing. So, yeah, that's probably what happened. They probably tried to go where Chase has got the new lot. They probably didn't get enough permits uh, to get in there. Maybe. That's probably what it is. I don't think they were at Broken Spoke or Spokes, Spokes and Spokes Bones, Bones last, last year. year right? They were out there. Remember, they were in that. Yeah. They were in the uh, uh, or the House of Blues parking lot there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's what um, happened. 
what was I going to say? Uh, Writer X wanted to know if you like the new information on the 2024 digital gauges now. So far, yes. But I mean, I haven't really, I should have said, I should have you update it. Or does he mean on the 2024 bikes? He means on the 2024 bikes. bikes. Oh, well, it's, they're not Dakota digital gauges, is it? No. No, that's what he said. Well, he said 2024. 20, there, is no, there is no Dakota digital gauges for they're the new just models. just digital gauges. They're not from Dakota. I yeah, think. so the gauges that are on the 2024s are Harley designs. They're not made by Dakota gauges. Well, that guy died three weeks ago. Who are we talking about? No. That's Steven. Maybe that guy that was in charge of the vendors? Oh, maybe. I'm sorry to hear. Yeah. Too bad for him. Good for everybody else. Who's, who took it over then? I know. I'm asking which ones you like better. Oh, do you like your code of the gauges better or the gauges on the 2024s? Which ones do you like better? I, I didn't get to play with the 2024 enough. But one of the things that my Dakota gauges do, don't do, which the the uh, the 24s do, is they tell you tire pressure. That's kind of nice. So that way you get on your bike and check your tire pressure. So I, I kind of like that. But the only thing that's nice about the Dakota gauges is if one gauge went bad, I could get that replaced. If the new 24s, something happens in that you got to replace the whole darn thing the whole board has to be replaced in that Dominic. a lot of people are worried about that but i don't know you know it's like anything else you know maybe you got the seven year warranty on the stupid thing that way at least for seven years you ain't got to worry about it uh yes and it's sold dominic if that's the, the, the one that wrote it dominic's on he said well it says dominic's watching and then it says hey guys are you selling your pontoon so but sold it's, it today yeah so if, you're, if dominic sold it I, uh, well, what's, what happened was our youngest daughter moved to Kansas, and that's the, they had the boys that came out every holiday. Well, now since they're out there, they're not coming out. And we just, with this, we just don't have time to drag We're never out. home. We I mean, last year we didn't write, we did, wasn't on it at all. You need to come out in your boat. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, so that's, we'll let you know when we get home. And if you guys are out, we'll come meet you. <laughs> and uh, so, I, I we got to the point where last year we didn't take it out at all, and Mindy and the boys took it out once. So it's like you're paying for all this money, and I've I put a new outdrive on it. I had to change the axles on the trailer, I, tires, new tires. I changed the the hitch was all screwed up, kept locking up on oh, it. Oh, that was the best money we ever spent. With and that uh, so we changed that. What else did I do? Oh, we put new upholstery. All the top pieces were replaced. Uh, uh, we put those on ourselves. Uh, that was fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, I bought a new radio. We, we took them off. They made them. Yeah, the guy in, in uh, Port Mojave made it. They almost everybody makes it. He, he's a really, he did a good job. And uh, matched it perfect. It was a great match. I didn't have to change the bottoms or nothing. The guy didn't even notice that they were changed. And I didn't tell anybody I put new ones. In. And uh, what else did we do? Uh, I put a new radio on it. The depth finder broke. I replaced that. I like the depth finder because with the rocks in the river, I like to know where they're coming from. Keep, stay away from the rocks. That, that yeah that's who it was that the vendor organizer he shouldn't have been so mean maybe wouldn't have died so soon he wasn't he was an angry man but well, still would have gave you a stroke if you were an angry man that sounds good i'll take you out in the hydro oh is that the best one i don't know he got did he get a new he because uh, he he had a pontoon but sold, i think he sold it who dominic. uh dominic i don't think he ever had a pontoon he had he had that uh like a cigar looking boat yeah but he, i don't know did you just, have a pontoon there for a minute i, I think, think he did yeah, that's that racing boat. I know he had that. the fast one. Well, what's the hydro? I think that's a fast boat too. It is. Uh, laugh out loud, Facebook user. Dominic likes fast boats. That's why he wanted so to be. Karen, I didn't see any messages. Not a messenger. And well, you have to reboot the phone to see if you, if she left you a phone call. Maybe she called. Oh. If you called, we have to reboot the phone. All that's right. something bad about the visible phone. Sometimes you have to reboot it once in a while. Well, it might just be because ours is older too. It's probably I don't know what four or five years old. It's not 21. No. No, faster boat. <laughs> so I guess he didn't have a pontoon. I could swear I saw I pictures of you guys on a pontoon. Maybe you guys rented one. I think it was one of your grandkids' birthdays or something. You guys were all on a pontoon boat. This was years ago, like four or five years ago. Karen says phone. Okay. When are you going to finally move to Havasu? Did you get your wife to retire yet? Not yet. Dominic. That's what you get for marrying a girl 20 years or younger than you. 
Did you buy another house too? They did. I I did you sell it. your other one? I'm assuming so. I like the house you had. The, the, the last one you had. I didn't get to see the, the time before. Yeah. You know, well, the time before we seen that house. Yeah. And then he bought the other one that you could see the lake from. So where I don't even know where this one's at. You'll have to send see a picture. address. They haven't even seen a picture. The inside. They said they the went one? down there. Yeah. They were sitting inside. Well, they showed the fireplace and all that stuff. We'll talk soon, he said. <laughs> all right. That sounds good. So Dominic's a guy I actually used to work for with at work. the gas company. He was actually a regional officer when I was president of the union. So that's how I knew Dominic. And then he had a house out in Lake Havasu and had a boat. So we kind of had something in common. And he likes fast cars and, and stuff like that. Fast so, boats. Yeah. So we had a pretty good common domi- the, denominator. Yeah, that's it. And uh, so pretty good guy. And now... He should be back to normal. I think he had all the surgery. I got to get shoulder surgery once I get 65 so I could get it. He's, know, he's another one. He's the one we know that's in Baca. And then that takes up a lot of his time, too. I don't know. Are you still in Baca? I don't know. He might give that up, too. That's I a lot. Know. It was. A, he was. He did a lot in that. Yes. That's how we knew. Best women. <laughs> no, that. his wife's really pretty. That was right direct. Uh, Rosemary. So Dominic and Rosemary. She, that, she makes big money. <laughs> She probably makes she's more money. Like, she's probably making. She's like superintendent of superintendent the school. Superintendent of, uh, I think, the special needs school. Yeah. So yeah, it, he just works at the gas company like me. <laughs> we make good money, but not that damn good money. And good insurance. Yeah. But she might have good insurance too. Now he's got the retirement. Because I think he's. He <laughs> put a heart on. So. There you go. Oh. So that's we won't tell you no more about Dominic. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. I see him on Facebook all the time, but I don't see him. In, I haven't ran into him a while. We're never home. <laughs> we left in February. We'll be home till August. Then we'll be home about a month and leave again for a couple weeks. <laughs> Here and there. <laughs> we'll be back again. Goodness. So we're usually home November, December, and January. Then we're at the Meat Love Auction. End of January. Buying some more bikes. Mm-hmm. Some more choppers. Maybe a fat boy will then. low. It's always been no one the other day, but it ended up being it was a meek on. But bad news was, after I put a bid in, you had to find your own shipper to ship it home. Well, that'd have been a fun thing to do. Luckily, we didn't end up buying it. He says, see how far away Little Rock, Arkansas is from Wichita. Get my son in law to go pick it up. <laughs> I didn't put it on a trailer and haul it back to his Five place. hours away. We drag it and put it in the trailer. Once we take it to there. Sturgis. We push a wreck bike out in the Sturgis when we get there. <laughs> We could do a video on that and say, wow, I came to Sturgis and we did the Iron Mountain and look what happened. We wiped out. I could lay the bike down. Look like we're all these. Cause somebody was talking about that the other day that I met another YouTuber was talking about other videos that people put out clickbait. and which is it's clickbait. They're not really, you never really see or what they said they were doing. You didn't really had nothing to do with what the video was about. We'll have like five adopted kids if we do this. But, Ryder X says he's waiting for us to adopt him. And Tony Huffman, a few minutes ago, or back there, said, you guys never adopted me yet. So we have like a dozen adopted kids. We already have one adopted daughter. Not really, but she was. She lived with us all through high school, or the daughter, because they lived so far out of town. And so they had cheerleading and all this stuff. And they worked for, she worked for us. Or we had a DJ. DJ company. So she'd stay with us like four or five nights a week. Most of during the week, yeah. And then the weekends, because we were, I don't know. She was at our house a lot, so we always consider her our adopted daughter. Lexi. She's my L child. Lexi. Because we had the J's, K's, and then M. So Lexi's our L daughter. Anyway. No. So that's the story. Dominic there. texted you, I saw. Awesome. Can't see. It's on his phone. <laughs> Maybe he shipped us his address. Maybe. And, uh. But yeah, it's uh oh, I, you may not. I guess well, I'm gonna should know that. I built a 50 by 60 steel building. I got a motorcycle lift, <laughs> welders, <laughs> equipment. I got a new toolbox. <laughs> got the boat sold. I, I got may end up paying me money to store the boat in the garage. <laughs> be nice. That'd be my first renter. My daughter would be very happy. <laughs> well, we don't know if the guy because the, the idea was if they, they want to come out, they want to use the boat next year or this year sometime. Oh, it shouldn't be during a holiday, which I tell them it couldn't be a holiday. But I might tell this guy, hey, we'll use the boat, put on, you know, 10 hours on the boat. We'll put many hours on. We just sit in the cold usually. And uh, give you a free month's rent. Yeah, give you three <laughs> months rent to leave it in the garage. 
So, because I'm thinking about doing that. What I'm thinking about doing is I've got that acre. It's an acre lot, all rocked, all fenced in, cameras and everything, and alarm on the building. And so I could put a few boats inside. And then I was thinking about putting carports up and putting boats outside. It's industrial. It's uh, agriculture property. So I could get away with probably six or ten boats outside and nobody would say no. So I'm thinking about doing it. So right, direct. If you come to Sturgis this year, Jerry and Joe will be there. Do you know that? They only come every other year. So if you wait till the 85th, they're probably not coming. So just keep that in mind if you haven't booked yet. So get me and do. We really need to talk. I'm looking to build into building one now. There you go. Yep. I'll tell you who just who to do it. Have it done. Yep. That excellent job. Well, uh, and tell them we sent you. <laughs> Which won't get us anything. No, but I mean, because we tried to get the guy to do a YouTube video on it because we thought it'd be really cool. And yeah, 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 yeah. Never did it. So anyway, uh, Bob's boots and bikes. <laughs> Is that going to be uh, on top of the dealership? Steven, Steven always calls it the the. Oh, dealership. we got to call about that too. My Harley Davidson's big sign. Oh yeah, Mike. That was a good big name. Oh, well, know what Mike? Well, you know how many Mikes we know? Um, I then I can't say anymore because I was gonna say what we just found out about him today. Chris says, "Hey everybody, hi, how you doing, Chris? It's been two hours and one minute." Holy Jennifer Jupiters! It's your microphone. Things heavy. It is. Stop. You gotta put this old guy on his and scratch the lenses up. Uh, just my need barbecue and be Bob's boats, bikes, and barbecue. Uh, Chris we... says, Adopt me. <laughs> How much money comes with all you guys if we adopt you? Do you have a checking and banking account with a deposit of money that you will? It's the dealership, yeah. That's what Stephen calls it the dealership. Yeah. But we don't have a big Harley sign yet, and uh, we're supposed somebody to said was going to give us one, so yeah, yeah, we got to make a phone call and see if that's going to happen. I'm hoping for the really long one. It's all letters. It says Harley Davidson. And I'm going to put it on the uh, inside. I'm not putting it on the outside. But uh, on the back walls, when you come in, it says Harley Davidson. Right now, it, over the thing, it says it's the Beaver Bar. Where we took over the Beaver Damn Oh, right about, bar, the camper. We found out, which I don't know if it's true or not yet, that uh, where the Beaver Bar was at, that was actually used to be called the Thunderdome. There's a lady, which we got to make the phone call, make sure this is legit. I just made sure I had his phone number there. It's and call there tomorrow, and we'll find out if it's legit or not. But they're trying or somebody to. Somebody scamming, they're, just getting money. Yeah. Right. They're vet renting out spaces inside for vendors. So. Don't know how true that is, but we'll find out for you and let you know. So if you're looking for a vendor spot or something like that, the old Beaver Bar locations are going to be open. But I don't. I just don't. What sucks about that is if you're coming out of in from town and you're buffalo chip, you can't make a left hand turn into the place. You've got to go through the gas station or go through the light and then try to weave around through the gas station and get there. Now coming back, it's easy to get in there. So it kind of that kind of sucks. So now they may take the barricades out for the rally because now the gas people that own the gas station and own the Thunderdome or whatever they call it is the same guy. And the guy that used to own the... Well, he still owns the track. Yeah, the track. And, well, he didn't do the swap meet, but he rented to the people that did the swap meet. Swap meet's going to be out at... Buffalo Chip. Buffalo Chip back in the back where they have Camp Zero at. You get to go to swap meet for free. Okay. You don't have to pay for a campground membership. So that's pretty exciting. And so we got a video coming out here in the next few days. We got to do it. Probably maybe tomorrow when we get there early enough, we'll start working on the video for Sturgis. That's more of us talking, but I got to put a bunch of pictures up in front of it while we're talking. Thank you. Some great information that we know about the 84th rally. They can call the city tomorrow, too, and double check to make sure the race is canceled. See how that goes. But that's, I don't, you know, and some of the people are from the Sturgis. I don't know if anybody's on from Sturgis is on here. You know, I was, either way on the race, I, I felt that the race wasn't going to bring the crowd that they think it's going to. That's my opinion. And I don't think it would help people over. I think it would have been better to have it on Saturday night. And a lot of the people that were in the city said the same thing. But local businesses whined and cried about it. Oh, we're not going to sell the t-shirts. Too bad. Uh, so, because that's what they try to say. Well, Sunday's our busiest day. People are coming in. There's nobody there on Sunday. 
yeah, you can pick a deal up on shirts five for 25 bucks or something like that. But I mean, you get that on the way out of town. But I mean, you're not you're not going to fight to get that. If you if you hang around Saturday night late enough before they close, they'll put them down already. They'll knock them down. Or you just wait till the next rally and they'll have them on that other shirt rack again. You could you buy Laconia shirts this year but for the hundredth. They're selling them at all the rallies. No big deal. Ones they couldn't sell. That's right. So <laughs> they're, they're, you can buy it another. Sturgis 83rd, you can buy this year for the 83rd. You can buy the 79th. I've got a couple of shirts I bought a couple of years ago that we forgot to buy shirts at. That I went ahead and bought a couple of years ago. They still had them on the racks. And you get them a lot cheaper. I could a lot cheaper. So, so like I said, Sturgis, what the problem with Sturgis is, is it's dead. You go up there right now. Louis is open. The little store down there that takes the pictures, they're open. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole <laughs> lot of stuff on Main Street open. So it's dead. Craig King just got a sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, so you, 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 when you look at this, so it is, it, that's what brings the money. And no matter what anybody says, and some lady argued with me this week about it, motorcycle rallies are not going to last that much longer. Uh, I'm going to say 10 years, but it may even be less than 10 years. If you watched my video the other day about accessories for your parts, I finally figured it out and I asked questions all, you don't have to watch the I would wish you would watch the whole video, but you don't have to, but as I'm going to tell you now, uh, well, some people that I've been talking to this year started in Daytona. I started asking guys, and uh, I always said, you know, when you were between 16 and 18, didn't you have a car that you souped it all up and you put glass packs on it, and wide tires, and maybe you changed the motor and all that stuff? And I, everyone said, yeah. Well, we're doing the same thing to the bikes that we have. Them. That's why I think we do what we do to Harleys. Now, there's no other manufacturer of motorcycles that has the accessories that you right. can get on Harley Davidson's. So that's what makes it nice to be able to customize your motorcycle. Because like my car, I had a 70 Duster and it, there was no other 70 Duster like mine. And that was the idea of what you did when you were in high school. You, you fixed up a car and you did a bunch of stuff to it. And, and, and that's what you had. Well, the next generation that we have now, these 30 and 40 year old people, most of them are ride, driving around on rice burners. And they're, uh, you know, they might put a muffler on the back. It sounds like a weed whacker on crack. And then they might put a spoiler on the back. You know, they might put a stereo in it. But they have really no real interest to ride in a motorcycle. And this is true already with hog groups. Because you can see Harley Davidson last year already changing the format that you can go on their app now. And you can find people like right now. I could go into the app and find somebody to ride with in Orlando that wants to go ride. Besides riding, that wants to go riding with us, you know, and say, "Hey, we want to do a ride over Wednesday to," and we, we probably could find people in the hog group that say, "Hey, I'd love to go with you guys over to OC Choppers and stuff, and go over to Birch Barracuda." And so that they're already looking at that because a lot of the hog groups are dying. There, there's not a lot of guys that are going to them now. Florida's a little exception because there's an older crowd here, but like in our hog group, ride year round. The hog group we have in Kingman, Arizona, there's not a whole lot of people that come to the events. And so it, it kind of makes it to where it's just tough for, for hog groups. So you end up finding that these younger kids, not that there's a subject. Somebody said, well, my son's 30 years old and he rides the Sturgis every year. Well, of course there is. And there's a guy that's 99 years old, probably riding the Sturgis too. <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 anything's possible. But I'm just saying that the industry that we see today, and the like this growing girl said is, when we talked the other day, said, they said the same thing in the 70s. Well, that's what she said. My dad said that, and that was 20 years ago. But what I'm basing it on is the younger generation. Uh, well, for instance, my son in law, my son in law that lives in Kansas now, his dad rides a Harley and has had one for years. I ride a Harley, had one for years. He'd love to have one, but he has a car payment, he has a house payment, he has two kids he's putting through high school. And so they don't have, can't afford a $17,000 entry level bike. So it's like, he'd like to have a motorcycle. He hopes that when he dies, when his dad dies, he might get it. But I think his sister's going to get the bike, but she don't even ride a bike. Her husband does, but he ain't a biker. And uh, so, but that's the problem that we have. It, it's, it's, they can't afford it. Yeah. The economy sucks. People don't make money. Too many people didn't get into their trade. 
and it just doesn't seem like people make the money that you made 20 years ago. Uh, or maybe it doesn't go as far as you want. You know, I never, I've had a motorcycle. Well, we didn't really get, we've had motorcycles. But I didn't buy my first Harley till I moved to California where I made a lot more money. 2007. We made a lot more money. Probably four times what we made when we lived in Missouri. Might even be more than that. And uh, so that, well, I could afford a motorcycle. I could afford a car payment. I could afford a house payment. It wasn't that big of a deal. Well, when I was living in Illinois, Missouri, there was no way I could afford a four or $500 motorcycle payment. It just wasn't away. On top of everything else. Considering the house payment was six seventy five. dollars <laughs> Car payment was probably, I don't know what the band was, $300, $200. We had a conversion oh, band. And uh, so it wasn't that big a deal. Now, as like I say, my little ranger out there, I'm paying $475 a month for. Our house payment's not that bad. I think it's $1,800 for a house payment now for that. But I mean, that's almost triple what we were paying yes, they have. 20 years ago. So it clips on notch that it, bikes have really jumped in the last 10 years. And uh, everything has. How about that? You know, I don't, which is what you keep saying, I don't know how these people are buying $80,000 trucks. Pickup trucks between eighty and a hundred thousand. Some of those trucks are, and, and it's, it's like, like I, even a car. I don't can't even see how you could afford a payment on that. And then if you're turning around, let's oh, I put I I put half the money down. It's an eighty thousand vehicle, eighty thousand dollar vehicle. You're putting forty thousand down. I would invest that in something other than a stupid car if I had forty thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> just just my thoughts. That's well, so what we we always had when we first got married. We always had used cars. We yeah. never had a new car. Well, because really the first new thing we bought was that van, conversion van. It was the only first time we had, everything else was used. Yeah. So. Even the Ford Fairmont. Yeah. It was bought from Hertz Rent a Car. Yeah. So only the van we bought, and I was the only thing that was brand new. The blue one and then the white one. Yeah. But from a dealer. Other than that, we always had used cars. And they were fine. It wasn't all about, <laughs> wasn't got there to show off of what we had. And uh, after now, I think about it, I probably shouldn't have bought the Ranger I should have just bought another something with low miles. Well, that's, that's what we were looking for. We couldn't find anything. I know, but I mean, I didn't mind if it was seven, eight years old, and we did find one, and they only wanted five or six thousand for it, but it had ninety or no, he wanted ten thousand. Oh, and it, it had and ninety thousand miles. miles, and I'm like, well, that's what we're trying to get away from. So, so the only thing we find with those miles was like in the well, we wanted a Ranger because I'd still like to have. I don't like to really take my diesel. To the, to the dump and stuff like that and dump stuff in it. Or this is a pretty new truck, 2021. It's newer, but I mean, it's, but we need a car that would take, we need to take a long trip. We got something that's like we if we go it. to California or wherever, we could take it even used cars. I know. Tell me, Ride King knows that. <laughs> yeah, he just bought a truck. He said, I forgot to send you pictures. Well, we'll get to see him in person after tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, he'll be working. <clears throat> well, we'll see him next week sometime. Thursday. Uh, my daughter just bought a 2024 Kia Toleride, eighty thousand dollars. You gotta watch those Kias. That's what they're stealing. Somebody said that they uh, down here in Florida that if you had an IKEA, that uh, the insurance has gone like quadruple. For one person told us that the da their daughter sold it because they couldn't afford the insurance on the car because they're getting stolen. I don't know why anybody would steal an IKEA. I don't know, but I guess they're easy to steal. I don't know. Did he break into? I don't well, see some cars they steal because they want they want something out of it. You know, like the the uh, one of the SUVs. It was the back seat. The very last pe seat was worth uh, used. It were worth like fifteen hundred twenty five hundred dollars. So people were stealing them just to get that seat out of. They that's all they stole out of. You know what well, that somebody else was stealing the the bumpers or something, weren't they? In another yeah. vehicle. Well, murder vehicle. Well, that murders. was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, did they again? I guess he's getting cold. He must be going out to turn that off. Lots of good deals had on trucks now. Must be overstock after dealers are going, gouging the customers during COVID. Well, they keep wanting to buy our truck back. And that's what he says. Do you have another F-250 you can sell me, a diesel? No. Well, then I'm not going to give you this one. And then, because they're they're almost willing to give us what we paid for, because we got a really good deal on our truck. But then we'd have to find another really good deal. And we don't have any payments on it right now, so we don't want any more payments. And afford two payments anyway because we already got a payment on the the little ranger uh i tried to tell her not to i know told our kids that too 
They wanted uh, the youngest one had to have Alexis. They had to have Alexis. They got a used one, but yeah. And then when something broke down on it, they're like, "Oh my gosh, why does it cost so much?" Because it's Alexis. <laughs> you're paying for the name. You're not paying. That's like I didn't care. If it got me from point A to point B, and it looked halfway decent, you know, things weren't falling off it. I didn't care what it looked like or what it was. So, but I guess I've never been very materialistic. <laughs> I'm looking for a 70 model Ford truck and I'm looking for a 79 CJ7. It's two things I'm looking for. Oh, I've got a cherry picker. Now. Who knows what a cherry picker is? <laughs> a free one. <coughs> I wanted to get it out of his garage. He didn't think I knew what it was. I, mean, I don't know why you wouldn't think I would know what that was. My dad was a mechanic, he was a mechanic. So that gives you a little that's just what you asked the other day. Why did they call it a cherry picker? Well, I did. I know what it was, but I didn't know why they called it that. Do you know why? Sure, it's. I don't want everybody to know what it is. First, they're probably waiting for them to tell me. I didn't have a person or a window to go through when I was a young kid. Thank you, Coca Cola and the stock market. There you go. And uh, well, I didn't have a money either. That's sweet. He knows what it is. I. Uh, I worked. I've. I started my first job when I was. Your paper route? Yeah, I'm trying to think what grade I would be. Probably fourth or fifth grade. Okay. I had a paper route. I delivered newspaper every freaking day but Sunday. I didn't have Sunday paper, it's Saturday. And I had to go out and collect the money and do collections and stuff. And I made money. I saved up my first bicycle I ever bought in 19, I don't know what year that was. I bought a Swin bicycle. So you were back in and Belleville? It was, yep. It was $126 I paid cash for. My mom and dad didn't have that kind of money. So I'd save that money up and I got it. I've always. Like Mike said, engine hoist. Yeah. And uh, the cherries, because when you pull the motor out, you pluck it. So it's like pulling the cherry off the tree. You have to pull the cherry out of the, pull the motor out. And uh, so now I got a cherry picker so I can change that motor if I get that Ford truck and I need to take the motor out and rebuild it. I just need an engine stand now. That motor hoist. Then I can have that hanging on the motor hanging. We built a few motors, yeah, not a whole lot. <laughs> so I had the paper route, and then after that, my brother cut grass. My brother had the paper route first, and then he got tired. Tony Huffman says his brother has a 70s model Ford short bed for sale. What size motor is that? <coughs> is it an auto or a stick? And uh, we'll see a lot of people have got these Ford trucks, these older ones, and they think they're worth, like I had one guy, I, I looked they're at They're an antique. I looked at it, and the guy wanted $5,000, and it was a rust bucket. I'm like, dude. That truck, you're gonna spend twenty grand fixing that truck up, and it ain't gonna be worth twenty five thousand. No matter what they say, that it ain't worth it. It's not a collector's item. And uh, the only way they're collector, if you have an original one that's got low miles on it, well, yeah, that's gonna bring some decent money. But it's not a Barracuda, and it's not a Chevelle, or it's not an El Camino, or it's a freaking Ford truck. It ain't worth right. it. Oh, super sport. Yeah, it's worth some money too. But uh, or a Super B. You know, we're looking to talking about a hundred thousand dollar cars, but the, it, a, a Ford truck, it's a Chevy truck's the same way. It ain't worth a lot of money for a 70s model truck. But these guys think when they got them that they're a collector's item. Well, Jeeps are the same way. There's some stupid people wanting twenty thousand dollars for a 79 <laughs> CJ7, and you're smoking dope. You, you find some stupid moron that wants to pay that. It's a stick and a six. Mm, I really want a V8. A stick is a three on the tree or on the floor. Oh, yeah, Broncos right. are mad money now. He would never have a Bronco. Uh, <laughs> Somebody he didn't well, like. Well, that international. I wouldn't want an international either. Truck, I had an international truck, but I wouldn't want an international Bronco style. I don't like them. Broncos, yeah. They're they're a little bit more of a collector's item because there's not as many of them. But Ford trucks, there's millions of Ford trucks. It's just <laughs> finding the right one and somebody that wants something decent. I found a nice one. Well, you said the paint job wasn't that yeah. great. Yeah, I don't know what they wanted. Punta Gorda. But it look, wasn't for sale. I didn't really need one necessarily restored. I, I'd rather do the work myself. I don't want one that's completely a rust bucket that came from the Midwest and ate salt, or one that's on the coast here that got all laid up. I want something that has decent body still to it. But like in a Jeep, you can buy a whole fiberglass body for a Jeep. So the body's not that important, but I'd rather have one that's got a decent steel body on it. Uh, prefer an automatic, but I mean, I'd take a stick. Wouldn't be a bad deal on a Jeep. But uh, I've seen a few down here. There's some down here, four or five thousand, which isn't too bad for one that's running. Uh, it needs a little bit of work, but I mean, a couple of them have already got the rust panels on the 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 uh, 
diamond plating on the corners. And, and you know, it's a nightmare underneath that. I've had I've had about 10 Jeeves. And the 79 was the only one. That was my very first one. I, that's always the one I've always liked. That was the blue one. The blue one's the 78. That's the last one I had. That's the one that mm -hmm. took. I know, but I thought that was the first one. No, the orange one was first. And I had a blue, and then I had a brown one. And I had the brown one just ate them. It was for a rust bucket. I sold that pretty quick. So, so uh, cars. Rod wanted to know what road we were taking back to Orlando. Oh, no. The one that has least amount of traffic on it. I was thinking once we got to Lakeland, we could take that back way, and that would drop us off right there at the campground. But so we I don't know. We're going to Google it tomorrow morning. We'll see what they recommend. Like well, coming down here, we took the four all the way. No. No, we took the 75. And it was really wasn't bad traffic at all. But going back, well, you could see the traffic on the other side was backed up all the way to Orlando. So the one time we went down here, we Purple took all one? the back roads. We went through that Arcadia and made a lot of turns. And, and I think of, we went to 17 is what we did. And so we, it, what, we'll see what they recommend. So we're leaving about 7 in the morning. So we've got. Is that in Daytona? Cheek Beach starts Friday, he says. Mike, Mike. I think he's in Daytona. Yeah. I thought that was last week. I don't know. I saw a video about Space Mountain breaking down. Were you guys trying to get some extra time off breaking it? He doesn't work at Disneyland. He works over at Animal Kingdom. Hey, there's Des. But in, in his case, if something broke, right. he's working because that's what he does. He fixes yeah. the rides. <laughs> so he wouldn't so get time off. He'd get an overtime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, no. Karen says it's red. Because Karen saw, remember, she told us to go look at her purple Jeep. We yeah. went around the back and saw yeah. it. Um, she said she, they've got a red Jeep for sale. Here's that. What year is your Jeep, Karen? See, I got it. I'm looking 78, 79. I really don't want to get, that's really the only two years I'm looking for. Uh, and it's got to be a seven. Right. I don't want a five. Uh, Everest and Kelly. Because it's like, the, it's like the, for Karen, those trailers, the flatbed trailers you gave me that place, that's really not a bad price. But I'd have to come over here and haul it back home. So it wouldn't be worth the How price. How are we going to do that? <laughs> that's why I said it wouldn't be. It, it's a good price that that guy's asking for those trailers, but it's not feasible for me it's to ship 07. it home. Or what year? Seven. Oh, seven. I like, new. I like the, well, it's like my daughter. My daughter's got a newer one. I don't know how year they got. But I mean, you get into it and it's, it's got all this like fancy dashboard and all this stuff. Like, this isn't a freaking Jeep. And it goes off when you stop and goes on when you stop. <laughs> like, it's not a Jeep. I hate those. It's a car. But and, yeah, it's all it's touch screen and GPS and yeah, everything's on it. It's like it's, air conditioning. He's like, this ain't no Jeep. <laughs> Mine was a hard top, but I, I I'm okay with the it soft was top. Cold in the wintertime. Oh, in the summer. I never got never got an engine. Never got hot enough to heat up the uh, inside. You bundled up. I had a snow plow on it. Had a western plow. A lot of snow. Had to. I had a dump truck too. I had a big old giant international. I don't know what the hell size that thing was. I was a monster. And, uh, but it had the highway blade on it. Was like this. And you had to get out and manually turn it if you wanted to do it the other way. But I used to. I did a giant mall back when malls were available. I, I used them all for a while. After I did it one time, I was like, I don't. You just go back and forth all day long, pull forward and back all the way back and back forward. I'm like I can't do this. All. What the boringest ass thing in the world? I think the old truck didn't even have a radio in it. It was a pecker. Hecker, Illinois, it was their uh, highway truck. And I, I don't know how I paid for that. I sold that too. I don't know where that I don't really know who the hell I sold that to either. And I said you couldn't remember we sold the tow truck to, did you? Was it no, it was, it was uh, not Pelkers, but it was uh, that junkyard down there by uh, Shelly's house where she used to live. You start with an F? No. Uh, it, was, it was back there on the right when you go, when you go past her house, you make that right. Pelkers. No, no Pelkers is the big one. The other end. They used to have a junkyard too there. They were Hoosiers. I can't remember what the names were. They were Hoosiers, a bunch of Hoosier junkyards. Down there by the dump and the racetrack. I know. I, I know where it's at. I can't think of the name of it. Mine is ready for off road and has a sunshade but a hard top. I'm not going off road. Uh, I'm going to go off road, but I want plates on it. 25,000 Jeeps down there and Yep, and, and it'll be a bunch of crazy people with brand new ones that they have no idea what real Jeeps are. They drive them on the street every day. We got a friend that uh, they got all the ducks across. It's ducks, right? Ducks yeah. must have 100 ducks inside this. And they go to all the, they went to the big one down there in Tennessee. I think it was at uh, Pigeon Ford. Yeah. Where, like where, uh, 
uh, Dolly World, Dollywood is that? Yeah. They went to that big one. That's one of the largest ones too. And, uh, and that thing probably hasn't been off the road ever. I did everything on mine. I pulled trees out of the ground with it. And like I said, plowed snow. It was a 304 with an automatic. And uh, had the automatic clock out hub. I'd rather have the manual one, but it had the automatic. I only had a short time. A guy offered me to wanted to buy it, and I sold it, and I should have never sold it. It was a good Jeep. Wasn't hard. It had very little rust on it. Somebody wrote you an essay. Hey, right now. <clears throat> I'm writing Arnold. You don't need it. Lots of older Jeeps as well. It's too late there. Uh, no, it's not. It's just an it's hour. 11.30. What? It's 9.30. It, it, They're an hour earlier. Uh, that's right. It's not. Uh, Jeeps, I can't see, are major financial trouble. No, Jeep not. is in major financial trouble. Well, I don't care. Mall crawler, a.k.a. new Jeep. <laughs> Alaskan hogs in June 250 are coming back for lower 48. It's going to be epic. Glacier Tours, Veterans Memorial Run, and four miles from Earth's house. There you go, Neil. What's going on with Jeep Rider X? Uh, Jeep is going to be off the chain. I pulled the big dump truck out of the sand. There you go. Uh, Jeep Jam in Myrtle Beach was huge. I They say they had some stupid ducks. <laughs> uh, I just have enough essential parts Jeep. Just enough essential parts Jeep. Okay. Is I that Rod King? I don't give a duck, yeah. <laughs> oh, Rod King, because he probably hasn't got rid of it. Is uh Jeep that blew the motor up. Mm. So he has essential parts oh, for the Jeep. Yeah. yeah, I guess he hasn't taken it to the dump yet. In case he buys another one, he's got parts for it. And I know I want a CJ7 and I will get one eventually. I just have to look around and figure out where I'm gonna go. I, I was kind of looking at some last time we were in Missouri. There were some some really good prices. They actually had some good prices down here in Florida and uh for an older one like that. But you gotta go look at them and see like the one Jeep I seen when we were going found a quartzite or something. I turned around and went back to go look at it. It was rough as hell. And I'm like, no, it's the guy was only asking, I don't know, 3,500 or something for it. But then when I looked at it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a piece a of 2,000 mile lifted and 37's got for 3,000. Somebody rolled it over. Kind of fun, but would not want a newer one. I'm sorry, I'm not a mill crawler. <laughs> Mall crawler. Uh, they're having a hard time selling cars, so they have a lot of overstock right now. I guess that's cheap. Well, that's pretty much everybody. Because I think with the price, because somebody, well, Richard said the other day, interest went up again another quarter percent, which I don't know if it, I'm assuming it did. We don't listen to the news, so we don't really know what's going on. But I mean, it is crazy to have, pick the, this uh, uh, thing we bought. I think I'm paying 9% interest, 8 or 9%. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. It was too long ago. Before we left. So, but I might refinance it here when we get back. I don't know. I'm thinking about titling it in Arizona. I mean, in South Dakota. Cheaper plates. Cheaper insurance. Well, insurance probably ain't no cheaper right now. How much hail damage up there lately? Yes. Well, we got our hail damage down here last year in Florida. Mm -hmm. so they ain't in Orlando. Yeah. Oh, man. The so are having a lot of, of a hard time, but Jeep is more impacted than most others. Chrysler. Used to be. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just that people look at, you know, I don't know. I can't really say why one sells and one doesn't. It's whatever people want to buy. You know, it depends on, you know. I see a lot of people now are scared to death on anything that's gasoline. Like, heck, if you're out in California, cost so much money. they're going to try to say, that, which is what. can't have it anymore. Here's what I found out is why the price of cars have jumped so much in the last 10 years is because every gasoline car you buy, so many thousands of dollars has to go to these new green deals to help pay for electric cars being built or to pay for the charging stations and all this stuff. And uh, we heard that from one of the dealers and they said that's, we pay like, I don't know, it's five or 10% of the profit or not profit, but the money and the price of the product goes towards that yeah, state. To try to push for electric cars. Yeah. And no matter what you say, we could never go totally electric unless we get rid of millions and millions and millions and millions of people because there isn't enough electricity there the solar there isn't enough wind there's not enough water to make enough electricity to run charge everybody's car 
Plus, you'd have to have a fast charger at home. There's no way they're going to run that kind of wiring. Uh, my son-in-law wanted that for his. He had a Tesla. They wanted over $10,000 to run a line from the pole. Well, it's just like my, my, my shop. I've got 200 amp service. I really wanted 400 amp coming in. They wanted another $10,000 just to run the wire to the pole. And I had to buy the box. So yeah. there's th that's the problem. People don't have that kind of money. And now you still have to, you know, and then you go to the charging stations and you, and you don't, somebody just wrote a letter the other day. You watch Adam Sandoval. He rented a car because all these rental places now want to give you an electric car for a rental. I would never take an electric car for a rental. My son-in-law's found that out. He's had electric cars since the first Tesla came out. He got one of the first ones. <coughs> He's never traveled more than about 100 miles with that thing in any one time. He tried to come out to our house once, 250 miles, and it was a nightmare. So, yeah, it, it is. It's, I don't know if we'll ever get to the time to get to it. And then lithium batteries, we already did our video on lithium, but I'm not, that's not so bad with cars, but it's toxic. You can't bury that thing. You can't recycle that thing. You have to bury it in the ground. Same thing with the windmills. Hydrogen fuel cells. Will, hydrogen fuel will be the future. Our gas company I used to work for, SoCal Gas, they were trying to push hydrogen, a mixture of hydrogen and natural gas together to the state of California. Instead, of the state of California blew it out of the water. They didn't want that. And uh, because they were showing that we could, it could be a lower price for it. Because uh, as they talk about natural gas, natural gas, if, 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 if the car is running clean, it's, it's about as clean as you can get. Uh, if it's not running properly, natural gas is one of the cleanest burning fuels there is. It does get a little, you know, when they do the fracking, you get a little bit of greenhouse gas come from that. But cows fart too. We're going to kill all the cows because we, you know, they fart too much and they, they're eating up the ozone. That was back in the day. No, but it still is that way. Okay. And so when people say all this stuff and it's like, everybody's so worried about everything. And it's like, you know, until you get China and Russia and all these other big countries on to, board to stop burning all the fossil fuels doesn't matter what the hell we do here we could be 100 percent electric and it's not going to make a damn bit of difference if the world explodes or not that's the way it is her dad went over to china and this is 20 years ago and they wouldn't let you out during the day because the air was so bad and anybody knew about the olympics they had to stop a bunch of factories because the the the, the gym the people working running okay. track and stuff would have died because of all the toxic fumes and well there. and the pollution is so bad over there it doesn't rain. I guess the rain can't get through the pollution to get down to get to the ground. So in China, they have these, I don't know what, some sort of canisters that they shoot up into the clouds to make water come down, whether it was rain or what it was, but water came down to make it rain. But they had to shoot stuff up in the sky to do so that. She got all that from her dad when he was over in China. He went to China for some and that medical treatment. And that been 2000, hmm, when was Play for? Eight. So the middle of 2008 that's when my dad was over there and so that's what i said it's and everybody keeps saying i don't i don't worry about the the, the greenhouse you know when i was a kid it was the aerosol cans they told us oh the pest the, the stuff that's in the aerosol can is going to eat up the ozone we're all going to die i die <laughs> so they got rid of all that now they got another thing that they're complaining about now it's he cars says, do you want hydrogen remember the hindenburg <laughs> yeah. that's true all right even on two and a half hours they're still asking questions what Listen, we're gonna be like a monkey. We're gonna be for five freaking hours no, tonight. Not. You might be. I didn't get to watch him last week, and I forgot Friday he was on. I seen him come on, but I didn't know. I didn't see him come on, and then so I never got on the monkey channel to see what the monkey had to say. So I missed it. Let me look at it. I got on somebody's the other day. Why about the one? Got on there for a few minutes. I, mean, I don't get a lot of time. A bunch of crap going on. But he's got two and a half hours to sit here and just yeah. Well, we're entertaining them, giving them the lowdown. We could sit on our motorcycles and look like we're riding. We could talk to you. It'd be like us talking in our helmets. Put a fan on us, blowing on us. Our hair would be blowing back. You have to put a green screen behind us. Why? Well, it was black back there. They just think we're riding at night. Turn our headlights on, and we'd be riding. Wouldn't that be a fun video? No. I could get that sound of a motorcycle <laughs> running in the background. I feel like the oh. monkey man. You guys have five people broadcasting on with you at your. No, I won't do that. Uh, I have to bring out the bottle if you're going to do the King Scale long. <laughs> oh, uh, Lisa from Pandabelle Influencers wanted to know how many teas you've had today. 
So that's the second jug. Oh, this one's still. Gotta go. Right. Billy Joel is on. Love you all. Oh, I wanted to watch that tonight. Yep. There's Karen. We seen Billy Joel in concert down in San Diego years yep, ago. It was a really good concert, good. but it was way far away. Well, we weren't too bad. We were up on the side. Remember? Yeah, but we were still away we from the far stage. Away, but I, I mean, couldn't throw a rock and hit him. No, but I mean, it's not like we were way out there up in the peanut heaven. We were on the side. Up in the peanut heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Where they throw the peanuts at. <laughs> Where you throw the peanuts at the Where other you people. Throw <laughs> other people. Who would do that? Good night, Des. Uh, Otto got that one town. All right. So pretty exciting. Just got started. Pretty okay, it just started. Did you see? What? So, see if we'll, we'll have to watch it on uh, uh, other TV. On Arizona time. Yeah. So that means I'm not going to get to see American Idol. It's already over. Well, you can watch it on Arizona time. That's what I said. You get over there, maybe I'll just record it. We'll record them both and watch them when we get over there. Watch them later. What did Andrew say? Stamps away. Hey, Bob. Product placement is everything. Your Bucky's mug was off. <laughs> They're not giving me any money. Somebody said that the other day. Somebody, they said, that's who ought to sponsor you. <laughs> but there's so many people putting Bucky videos out. It's ridiculous. So it's, Yeah, but how many people have Bucky's in every single one of their videos? Probably not. I don't know anybody at Bucky's. We're going to try one big, big person, not a motorcycle person, to see if they want to be interested in sponsoring us. We kind of got a price and we're going to see if they'll go. If they would go, that would be a really nice sponsor to have. And uh, it would be easy videos because it would be something that would be easy to tell you about. It's not lawyers or anything like that. Because yeah. I'm not, we, we, she's got one lawyer she wants to contact and talk to. See if they'll sponsor us. But typically, I don't really want a lawyer just for the fact that I want to recommend somebody to you. And you got to be a good lawyer, but you could still end up losing because you don't have control over the judge and whatever it's if you have a trial or whatever you have. I'm saying if you got hurt, one of the hurt lawyers, not get you out of the DUI or that. something. And um, so it's it's tough. It's like the other vendor, the other person is a vendor that we have that wants us to do videos for them because they've gotten a lot of business from us. So they want to in turn do something year round to have videos come out year round, which I have no problem with this person because it's somebody you've seen on our channel over the last four years. He's been on our channel before. So it's already a product that we recommend anyway. So it's just one more way. Why well, would you want to go? That's what Karen said. This is where everything's messed up because the masters was on today so that's why everything's on so late and so she said just get up and go watch tv if you want to watch it i said i can't get up i don't see it so i don't think it's so turn the volume down we got tv later. it would be cool to do a video on the history of bucky we kind of have we told you where the first one was and there's edith talk while i'm watching. all right uh, we did uh no that's the voice we uh we did kind of we i think we went to the very first one that they had opened and stuff so i don't know we'll have to see what they would do i'm bringing the projector to leesburg and i can put the bob and tam on the the rear trailer door there you go all right i guess we'll end i'm gonna see billy joel oh yeah when he wants to go it's time i'm on the end I can say a little more and talk. I can hit the little button right there and say bye. It's like you. Yeah. Then I'll be turning on when she's not ready. <laughs> I'll film you tomorrow morning when she gets out of bed. Yeah. We're gonna start doing those kind of videos. For the floating rectors to make noise on HD. The floating road oh rotors to make noise on the Harley Davidson. Okay, hit the like button. He's got Billy on. I dare you. I dare you so to what? No, to hit the end button. <laughs> so thanks for hanging out with us. We hope you enjoyed the video. We love you guys, all of you. Hope to see you at a rally, rally coming soon. soon. <laughs> Our so, around the rally. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share us with your family and friends. Give us a big thumbs up. Ring that bell for notifications. And we'll see you on the next video. What? Bye. Video. Bye. Hit that button yet? Yeah.